This is the City of Flint's City Council Meeting. Presented by Spectacle Productions, determined to make a difference. And the City of Flint, City Council. The Flint Apple Club, a great place to meet friends you never have to see again. Underwritten in part by Local 370 Flint, Michigan, United Association of Union of Plumbers, Pipe Fitters, Welders, and Service Techs. Pipe Fitters Union has entry level careers available and available at 810-720-5243. For more information on how to get involved with public access and these broadcasts, you can reach out to 810-239-2901. City of Flint, City Council meeting. Up next. And they keep on saying that stuff about, uh, about this uh, about this racial Miss President, Madam President, you know we history don't make us, his, history make us, we don't make history. As black peoples, and you of all peoples act like you got to you got to uh, address that back there in the room back there by jumping on Councilman Mays, ordering the, the popo to put him out. And the popo had to head it in the officer bill. You know that one the last time he put his hand on my Councilman Mays, you know what happened. Mays went straight to the bank, to ching and he, and then the same thing with, my God, you listening. I'm gonna stop right there because you listening too close. But I keep coming back. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is uh, Mr. Quincy Murphy. Is that Mr. Murphy. Good evening. Um, my name is Quincy Murphy. I got a couple of items that I want to speak on tonight. Uh, first um, item, the snow removal. Um, if you can get Rob Benzett to come up here and explain to the public what is the um, first phase, second phase, and the third phase of removing snow, when, the, when do the county come in, the road commission, do they come in and help the city of Flint? When do y'all get the side streets? Because it was ridiculous how um, our streets was looking. I know they probably was working hard, and I heard them talk about four snow events, but our neighborhood, I, I just don't recall our neighborhood, and I seen like 12 cars get stuck right in my little area yesterday. So we want to know what is the phase when when it first a snowstorm come? What street shot hit first? When should we expect y'all to be coming through the side streets or something? Um, secondly. Um, I think y'all need a sergeant of arms for the committee meetings. It's ridiculous that I go into these committee meetings and how it's um, being conducted. I don't think that the um, committee meetings is getting conducted in a uh, productive way. Last Wednesday when I went to the committee meeting, there was so much stuff on the agenda. One of the things that concerned me was Jefferson School. I've been working with Pastor um, Audrey's over there and it was on the um, agenda to be discussed, but it was so much chaos in the committee meeting that it didn't even get done and so much stuff in the committee has been getting tabled, tabled after tabled after tabled. I'm, as a charter commissioner, I've been coming, one of my roles as a charter commissioner was to come to the committee meetings so that if you guys talking about the charter, I would be able to sit there and um, um, shine in on anything that you guys not aware of. Now we've been working with the charter for three years. When I looked at some of you council members, I barely saw y'all come to the charter com committee um, meetings that we had in the community to have you give us input on the charter. What disgusts me and what was appalling to me so bad when I was in this committee meeting is when um, Councilman Davis accused us, and I had to go back to the tape, accused us of having a political agenda, part of the recall of the mayor and all of that stuff. That's absolutely um, not true. And you putting those statements out there and Quincy Murphy is going to denounce those statements. Then I went further to that. I went to the um, 
council rules or the agenda because um, Councilman Galloway, you told me I couldn't speak in that meeting. And I'm thinking I'm a charter commissioner and he's sitting up here talking about some things that is not true as a charter commissioner and I think I needed to be able to speak up for myself. So since I couldn't speak at, speak at the committee meeting, I'm coming to this podium and I'm going to speak and I'm going to denounce that stuff because we already dealt with the divide of this city with the recall and I refuse to let that be put in the atmosphere that the charter commissioners are attempt was to go after the mayor or the city council. We wanted accountability, we demanded it, and for some reason or another, this accountability at the board has got people up in arms, makes me want to make sure that the accountability and at the boards be put together. So I'm asking you guys to um, look at having a special meeting to deal with this charter, because I'm going to keep coming to this podium, and I'm going to keep denouncing that false accusations that's been putting out there on the charter commissioners. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next speaker. The next speaker is Mr. Chris Del Moroni. Mr. Del Moroni. Thank you. My name is Chris Del Moroni. I live in Flint, Michigan. Uh, so often we hear about, uh, so often we hear about transparency and there's a, a court settlement uh, it's resolution number one one eight zero zero three five Rutherford versus City of Flint at L. Um, you know we're going to pay out over three hundred thousand uh, dollars. It would seem like the public should be made aware of what happened, unless there's a provision in the settlement that says no, can't say anything about it. But as long as you're talking about the money, I'm sure there's not that provision in there. Um, the residents of the city of Flint are still overburdened with, with taxes and things of that nature. Uh, this is tax season now coming up, and the personal exemption for the city of Flint has not been raised probably in decades. It's at $600. And I believe that that should be raised. It should be indexed at least to inflation. Uh, to give a little more relief to the residents of the city of Flint. Uh, along with that, um, you know, if you pay your consumer's energy bill, you can do it over the telephone with a charge card, and uh, there's no additional charge. You can just simply call the number, make your payment. Uh, that's something we should look at here in the city of Flint. Um, and without being charged the extra fee. Right now, if you pay with a charge card downstairs on the first floor, you're charged uh, an extra uh, percentage. Um, so, you know, it's the little things that add up that make, that cost, end up costing a lot, or that make people move out of the city of Flint. Personal exemption, and be able to make a, 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 a payment on your water bill, property taxes, over the phone, without the additional charge. Um, the, um, you know, I'm the chairperson of the City of Flint Board of Review where people can appeal to property taxes. Uh, in this uh, resolution 180037, it talks about one's homestead. And I think that needs to be a little more clarified because if someone owns a house, that's their homestead, they claim it as their homestead. Well then, if they leave that house and move to another home, they can actually have both homes for, I believe it's two years, homesteaded. So I think it's important that you only get the break on the one house and not on both. Um, imagine the situation where you're living in the second house you got the homestead there, you got the homestead on the other one. So there needs to be clarify as to, are we gonna allow two homesteads or just one? And I think the, um, you know, I've said for years, if I can just sum up real quick. Please. The it, homeowners can apply for the poverty exemption. Um, and when they do that, if they qualify, on income, they also have to qualify based on the amount of taxes they pay in their house. And if they qualify on both, then they get a, re a little reduction in their property taxes and a reduction in their water bill. 
that's not available for renters. We need to set up something for renters. I mean, they could be identical homes, identical payments and all that, but renters get no water relief. Some homeowners will. And to, to be fair to everyone, we, we sh council should look at that. I think it's within your power to change that. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Delmaroni. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Next speaker is Ms. Carrie Weber. Ms. Weber. I'm back. I'm not happy to be back. I had swore I wasn't coming back because of my own health issues, but I'm back. And here's why. The city, ever since they took over the water delivery to homebound, which is the elderly, the disabled, starting with this evening's prayer, so let's all go back to church, the least of these. The city could not have done a worse job if they tried. The state was delivering water to over 2,900 homes. The city somehow is delivering water to somewhere around three to 500 homes. I'd love to know where 2,200 people went. That's just one issue. Issue two, they get four cases of water per week that is the limit. It doesn't matter if there's one person, if there's eight people, if there's 10 people, you get four cases. That's if, if they show up. See, what I found out why I was in California for a funeral over the holidays, Christmas, New Year's, Martin Luther King, all these holidays, anybody that had a Monday delivery never got water. They didn't make it up later in the week. One of the people I take water to and have since September of 2015, this is not a secret, I've done it this long, was skipped just until last week for four consecutive weeks. When they show up to drop off for four cases, they acknowledged absolutely they skipped her for four weeks. She's a complete shut-in. She had not been missing. She asked for the cases they had missed. No. The rules are, you get four cases, period. That's it. But it gets worse. Let me just tell you how much worse this city has screwed the pooch. Because that's where we're at. Used to be, way back in the day when the state had it, I could go to a pod, I could get 30 cases of water, I could fill up, let's say, six families in a day. I'm taking care of over 50 families. So do the math in your own head. Then the city takes over and says, nope, it's eight cases per family per day. So I start doing that. So now I'm down to 16 cases a day. And don't forget, I've got a family that needs water too, which I've only run out of four times while delivering to other people. So then in December, I went up to a pod, the Door Highway pod specifically, and I got 16 cases with two addresses, neither mine. I do not lie, I do not cheat. Please let me finish. If you wrap up. I went up and got them. My daughter went up two hours later and was told, no, you don't have two people in the car, you can't get 16. This is now the latest rule. I contacted you four days ago and asked you to call me. All the homebound are being told, March 31st, we're not delivering anymore. Best of luck to you. It gets worse, and, I, and I've got to do this because I can't come back here. I've already had one stroke. Right, I understand that. But in, in an effort to be fair with everyone, if you will just I will sum wrap it. up. This is what I was told. And this, is, this just happened Saturday, and I'm going to tell you, this is how I see the Flint attitude. One of the workers, and I'm going to use her words, and I'm sorry if they're offensive, one of the workers, Franklin Pod, I got her name today, told me that I needed to mind my own business, that the elderly were not her concern, this was not her problem, it wasn't my problem, and told me I would not be getting shit from them. They would not, I couldn't even get eight cases for my family. 
So this if, is a pod work. Okay. So if if you don't mind, can we get the information from oh, you? Oh yes, you okay. can. Okay. Okay. All because right. I stopped on the way here. This is point of right. order. Right, Councilman Mays. I mean, come on. Point of order. Um, if we didn't get any leeway. You Correct. can continue to give nope. leeway, but nope. you can't treat We're done. folks differently. Correct. And, and so, I don't appreciate then why don't you help? Are. We'll get, we'll get, Mr. Mays. That'd be fantastic. Beg your you pardon. can't, you can't dialogue back and forth with the Beg council. Nope, Councilman Mays, deliver. please don't. Let's well, not. Then, let's move What's on. her name? Thank you, this Madam Clerk. This next, problem. next person. Please. Our next speaker is uh, Mr. Gino T. Stewart. Mr. Stewart. This is the February 12, 2018 City of Flint City Council meeting. Yeah. How's everyone doing? My name is Gino Stewart. I said some comments on 9-11-2017 about ex-Mayor Don Walling and Governor Rick Snyder. Now the government has cut me off my disability. I will no longer receive my disability check after 4 2018 This is the kind of problems black people went through when they stood up and spoke up when racism was allowed. Isn't that bad for me to say that racism was allowed? That caused me to lose my disability. I would like to read the speak, the, read the uh, message that I read on 9-11-2017. My name is Gino Stewart. Mayor Dr. Karen Weaver is doing an excellent job. Mayor Dr. Karen Weaver is not, is one of the best mayors the city of Flint has had. Mayor Dr. Karen Weaver is not responsible for the poison water. Ex-Mayor Dan Walling and Governor Snyder is responsible. Mayor Dr. Karen Weaver is not responsible for the killings of 12 people or more from drinking that poison water. Ex-Mayor Dan Walling and Governor Snyder is responsible. Mayor Dr. Karen Weaver is not responsible for the 35% that was, that was illegally raised in water rates that illegally made millions of dollars from the citizens of Flint, Michigan. Ex-Mayor Dan Walling and Governor Snyder is responsible. Mayor Dr. Karen Weaver was able to get donations from a lot of entertainers. And not only that, President Obama gave millions of dollars to Mayor Dr. Karen Weaver, the city of Flint, to help with the water infrastructure. Now, some of you all wants to take away Mayor Dr. Karen Weaver's achievements and put them on your lap. You all need to focus on giving back the millions of dollars that ex-Mayor Dan Walling and Governor Snyder illegally made from us the citizens of Flint, Michigan. I guess President Trump don't care about the people in Flint, Michigan that's been killed from drinking this poison water because if President Trump did, instead of trying to build a wall to keep the Mexicans away, President Trump would help build this water infrastructure to keep the citizens of Flint, Michigan alive. Thank you. That's the speech that caused me to lose my disability. Thank you. Thank you, One sir. thing they didn't stop is for me standing up and speaking out for what's right. Thanks. Thank you. Madam Chair, next speaker. Yes, our next speaker is Mr. Arthur Woodson. Mr. Woodson. I thought I'd start off by saying I was the uh, citizen that got in touch with HUD uh, two weeks ago, and no one on city council asked me to get in touch with HUD. It's uh, our duty to make sure that everything is done, as the pastors always say, decent and in order. When we came and I saw that those funds was given out, I saw and I asked, 
how could those funds be given out without the public being aware? Why wasn't other citizens aware of those grants dollars being given out? So I called HUD, I went down to HUD. First off, they told me to please note that there should have been a public notice and a proposed program amendment regarding the reprogrammed dollars. The city of Flint would have to amend this annual action plan for the years the program funds came from and as well as its consolidated plan that covered the time period in accordance with the substantial change policy of the city's HUD approved consolidated plans. This change requires a program amendment to the annual action plan of the consolidated plans, a change in a community development block grant as a result of the addition or uh, cancellation of a program or a change in the purpose, scope, location, beneficiary of an activity requires a program amendment to the annual action plan of the consolidated plan. The city of Flint's program amendment and substantial change policy requires commission approval and public input at a public he hearing after proper notice has been published for a 30-day period or 30-day public comment period, the reallocations of the CDBG funds for projects activities will assist the Housing and Community Development Division in meeting the city's federal spending requirements. And at the bottom you see where it says re re reallocated CDBG funds, and then you have to say where it came from, the year it came from, and then where it's going to. Those things were not done. If you look at Smith Village, we had to pay back money for Smith Village. So if they come in here and they say that we did not allocate those funds correctly, we have to take it out of the general fund. So it would behoove you to reconsider that uh, motion or that resolution, bring it back until things are done decent and in order. Now also, I've been talking since phase two about $552,000 that the street maintenance was supposed to get from the water, uh, water funds. Phase two, that's two years ago. Those funds have not been put over here. Mr. Uh, Newsom said he was going to check into it. Why has it taken that long for these funds to come back into the budget here in the city of Flint? I don't understand it. And Dort Highway pods are shut down. We got some serious issues, and I keep on hearing people say about my recall, this and that and that and this. Well, it was more done in two months than it has been in two years. And you know what? I'm glad I did it because a lot has gotten done. And this city council is the checks and balance for the people. Just because the mayor sends it down doesn't Mr. mean that you have to approve it. Mr. Woodson. All right, thank you. Thank you. Our last speaker is uh, Pastor Alan Gilbert. Pastor Gilbert. Thank you, Madam Clerk, and to uh, Madam President Galloway and to the entire council. I wanted to come and um, talk about the snow plowing. One of the issues that I had about the snow plowing is that on 2 o'clock on yesterday, um, my street had not been plowed, and so I talked to Rob back there earlier, and I did listen to what, you, what was said in the community, I mean in the uh, committee room and in the committee uh, meeting. Uh, but I, my neighbor did tell me, Councilman Mays, I don't know if that's your ward, but, uh, and I'm being a little facetious here with you, is that uh, he went over to plow his kinfolk's driveway, and it said that Baltimore and Philadelphia had been plowed. And so I told him, he says, is that Councilman Mays' ward? I says, it might be, I don't know. And so we were having a little fun with it. So I only bring that up to, to make the point, is that uh, during the whole week, no one came through, no plow, no trucks, no nothing came through. And so uh, uh, Vice President Galloway, I, I didn't call you, I didn't want to worry you because I could get where I needed to go because I have a truck. But there were maybe seven, maybe eight, different individuals that I saw in the community that were stuck at intersections within the neighborhood. And that was the thing that I, I was most concerned about, especially when you get 
uh, seniors. On one side of me, on the east side, uh, is my neighbor, is, uh, she's, she's 86 years old. And on the corner of Kenny McPhail Street, Mrs. Bush is 92 years old. And so I was thinking about if it was an emergency, what would happen if vehicles couldn't get through, you know. I know the fire trucks can get through, but the other ones. So I just wanted to kind of uh, jog your mind on that a little bit. The other thing is uh, also concerning the charter, it, it's been 97 days since we voted in a new charter for the Flint City, for the city of Flint. It's been 43 days since the charter became the law of Flint up until this day, February the 12th, uh, 2018. And my question is, when is the changes to the charter going to be implemented? And what will the council do to see to it that this charter, which is the governing document to govern the city by both executive and legislative? That's my question. I'm, I'm kind of uneasy about the fact that there's been no implementation or execution of the new revisions in the, in the new charter. The last and very last thing is, is that the Ethics and Accountability Board in Section 3-591, has there been anyone appointed? Has there been anyone brought before a vote? Because I haven't been to every uh, council meeting this year. I had death in the family during the last one. So thank you so much, and I hope that you will address it. Thank you, Madam Clerk. You said there are no more? No. Um, okay. Um, at this point, each council person has the ability to um, respond to speakers. Um, Davina, if I'm not mistaken, that's a two minute. And um, if you will begin that process, Councilman Mays will begin on this side. Um, I would haven't. yield to my other colleagues, but I might get my thoughts together and speak later. I ain't ready to begin. I'll try to get the flow when I'm ready. Does anyone want to address Ms. Worthing? Please address the. Thank you. First to Quincy, uh, we have a meeting about the charter on Thursday evening. I just want you to be aware of that because we are making steps to further understand the charter and implement it. Um, as far as Carrie, uh, to be fair, for the four days, there was a snow emergency over the weekend. I've been getting a lot of calls and fielding a lot of complaints. Uh, also, I did send your complaint um, that you had mentioned on Facebook to the appropriate person, so that did get done. Uh, I will have to give that person a call because hearing exactly what happened in person is not acceptable to me. Uh, and and I know that there has been changes made and that the pods just might shut down uh, and that is not under our control the state is who is allocating mon money for that that's not acceptable in my personal opinion we should have the pods open until all of the pipes are replaced because as you replace pipes uh, you stir up the lead, you stir up bacteria, you stir up everything, and it, it's not good. So, and that wouldn't be until 2019. So, I don't know what we can do at this time to help with the uh, pods staying open, uh, but we will see what we can do, and I will be giving uh, a call tomorrow to the appropriate department about uh, the workers at the pods. Does anyone else want to address the speakers? Councilman Guerra. Yeah, for that, I wanted to comment on the, uh, the snow plows as well. I know that we have had a lot of snow come down, and I have seen uh, Rob has been trying to manage this with as little personnel as we possibly do have in the city. Uh, so just know that, to my knowledge, I know they're doing the best they can. And of course, we would always want to see things get done faster. Uh, but we had to keep in mind the city of Flint is a very large city, uh, and we are very short on personnel. And I think the number was, correct me if I'm wrong, we only have 13 plows out uh, for the entire city of Flint. that has roughly about 100,000 residents and lots of streets. Uh, if I could touch on the subject of the charter, I know that has been one thing that keeps getting brought up. And I mentioned back in committee uh, about, a, I think you proposed a resolution, if I 
I'm correct about the uh, clerk getting brought up, so that is progress uh, being made in the charter, and I have actually sent in my nomination for the Ethics Committee, which was Linda Boos, uh, to the clerk's office. Uh, but I don't want to rush any other colleagues on picking that nomination because it's a very important choice. It's going to oversee the city of Flint, and I think that people want to take more time uh, depending on how many applications they got and received. Uh, so do know that the city council is working on this, uh, but we all view this in a very important way and want to make sure when it's done, it's done right. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Yep, I, oh. I did hear you, Councilman Davis. Go ahead. Oh, I can? Yeah. Uh, I would like to address the snow issue as well, and maybe a little bit of charter. <clears throat> being over in the second ward, it seems to me that the residents is not being treated fair, because I notice when they do plow, they plow parts of streets, as Mr. Murphy alluded to. They don't plow the whole neighborhood completely as my constituents sitting right here in Centino, third, third ward. But uh, it's not fair. So, you know, I hope it's not a favoritism or a political, but all residents pay taxes and they deserve equal plowing and not being last always. And as well, the charter. Now, that's something I have to, I got concerns with. <clears throat> I feel the charter, and this is, Councilman Davis speaking on his own. It need a lot of attention to that charter. In the preamble of the charter, say all residents should be treated equally in this charter. And also the charter was put in the August primary with a vote yes petition following the charter from the commission. A lot of people did not vote. And now it's rumored that 80% of the residents wanted this charter. I feel it needs to be amended because it's not fair to every resident. Already we see development downtown is hard before it's always trying to move dollars over to the north side. The charter has to be inclusive of everyone. And a lot of people not speaking of the whole identity of the charter. The charter always also have a master plan tied to it. And inside that master plan, I don't know how it's inclusive of everyone. Over on the north side, a lot of people don't even know what green space mean when you hear the word green space. So we really need to really pay close attention to the movement that's pushing this charter. Is it inclusive of every resident here? Because people are already struggling. The ordinances, the, 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 the word of enforcement. We have dumping and blight and everything else over on the north side. And is that charter really gonna remove that or is it gonna cause more people to lose their houses? That's all I have to say. Thank you. Is there anyone else before we? Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, through you to the public, um, particularly, uh, not just particularly, but pastor who gave the prayer, the oldest African-American church in the history of the city of Flint, Quinn Chapel. I appreciate your presence in the, in the prayer in Black History Month. Um, Mr. Del Maroney, you are the chair of the review board, and if we got that on the agenda, I have no problem with you communicating and addressing it at that time versus the measly three minutes that is given to the residents. And I know Carrie Weber got upset, but Ms. Weber, when we work under these rules that's been put in place and they try to use them even earlier today to remove me by the police, Nothing personal to you, but I'm trying to watch how people selectively um, implement rules. These are the most ridiculous rules. Mr. Davis, you are the Point of champion. order, Madam Chair. Mr. Mays is not being relevant to what the speaker said. They said nothing about rules. Councilman Mays, you continue. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I don't. When I talk about two minutes to respond to residents that I work for, Mr. Woodson, your stuff will come up in the discussion item I amended the agenda. We'll hear from Ms. Ms. Wilcox and Mr. Murphy and to Pastor Gilbert. When you see council adjourn committee meetings, that agenda item is in fact on governmental ops and I've been saying I'll meet till the cows come home. And those are the facts. As far as you watch close who meets, who adjourns, and in two minutes, 
I just don't think you can address the people who come up here in two minutes. And so we're going to change these rules. We operating under old council rules, and you might not know it, Ms. Weber, but I'm out to let people talk back and forth when you talk. I don't think you should be setting up talking to people like we dummies and can't respond and in two minutes or you're out of order. And before this meeting up, I might move to suspend the rules. It's getting a little ridiculous, and it's got to change for the better so we can re serve the residents of the city of Flint. And Ms. Fields, it was relevant. Thank you. Thank you. It, does anyone else want to address the? OK, then I will. So Jimmy, you can start the timer. Um, I want to apologize to Mr. Quincy Murphy. Um, he must have left. Um, but I just want to say for the record, um, when Councilperson Davis was making his saying whatever he was saying about the charter, if I'm not mistaken, you were Facebooking live. And when he made the statement, I heard you in my ear say, hell to the no. That was confrontational for me. And although I respect that you served on the commission, I didn't think based on what I heard you say when he was speaking, and although he couldn't, and even though I wasn't cheering, Santino was, I just didn't think that it was going to be an effective dialogue. It didn't seem like a safe space. I know that we allow people to speak in our committee meetings, but generally those people are there to speak on subject matters. That wasn't a part of the agenda. Mr. Santino added it. And so I just thought in the, in the interest of peace based on your comment that it might not have been safe, but I also shared that we had had a meeting that your chairperson for the commission had came in and educated us, and we were still meeting again, if I'm not mistaken, Mrs. Um, um, Ms. Brown, they are meeting with us again this Thursday to give us some more information. So I wanted to share that and apologize to you if it was offensive in any way. Um, the second thing I wanted to um, uh, address is I too am working on my appointment for the ethics accountability. We are having a um, community meeting at the Brennan Center on February 20th from 5.30 to 7.30 to get some feedback. Um, I am concerned that the water pod was closed on Dort Highway. I don't know if it was communicated. I didn't know. Residents just started calling me and saying that pod is closed. That's alarming. Um, and then the last thing I want to say is I realize that there's a lot of snow. But the reality is, if you're coming one time, I'd like to see the best job done on the one time, because there's no guarantee that you're going to get there. And in my opinion, it was not done well. And I'm talking about no further snow fell after my snow was plowed and it was still people being stuck. And so I just wanted to say that. Agenda, Madam Chair, do we have any petitions and unofficial communications? No, no, we do not. Any official communications? Not at this time. Any additional communications? No. That takes us to appointments, but before we go to appointments, I would like to give um, Attorney Wheeler an opportunity um, to talk to us about the, um, the rules Madam and timing Chair. and or not timing. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I think Madam this question... Chair? Can I say something? Um, or is this point of information. Of what? Um, Mr. Griggs, I asked every council person if they had anything to say, and they said no. And so I ended the comment no, you, portion. You, you didn't look at me. I, I did yes. I, I, I'm I do sorry. have. It's, a, it's not long. Would you Would you like to speak? Yeah, please. Please, uh, Mr. Murphy, on uh, the ethics and accountability. Uh, board appointments. This is a this is a tough thing to do. In Ward Eight, I have ten applicants right now, complete with resumes, and I'm not treating this lightly. I'm just not going to draw one out of the sky. Uh, but maybe I can finish by the end of this week. But it is an extremely important board. And I recognize that. That's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Griggs. Ms. Wheeler. Thank you. Um, in the uh, council rules under Rule 7.1 7 under Section 13, it speaks about 
entitled resolutions. It says that a, a council person can speak twice um, about the same question in the same day. The maximum time, according to the rule, is five minutes for a maximum. Um, and if you want to speak during your five minutes, then you can you can split it up. But the thing about it is, if you speak once and then you want to speak again during that same debate, um, then you have to wait till everyone else has spoken, has had the opportunity to speak um, prior to being able to pick back up and, and speak. Um, another thing it says in that rule is that the council members can request make requests of administration staff and others to speak um, as well. And the, the guest speaker time, whoever is speaking, that's gonna be determined by the presiding chair. So you would make that decision as far as how long they get to speak. And that that portion where that person is speaking um, is not to be counted against the time that an individual, allocated against the individual council member's time. Madam Chair. Council remains. Yeah, that's why when I heard you say that you could speak twice for five minutes based upon the language that I knew, and I still want to get a clarification. It does say you can speak twice, but it says for a maximum of five minutes. It even talk about not banking time. It's specific where you can't bank time. So my understanding of that was that if you speak for three minutes the first time and then you speak a second time for a maximum of two. And so I just want to get a clarification because remember, I don't even go along with these rules and you can't do business for a multi-million dollar city, in my opinion, in two and three minutes. We get a public that and now we elected. So my position is tell me since you read the rules and since you wanted me removed early, let's get this clear. What is the rules? Even though I might move to suspend them so we can take care of business, I didn't even agree with them when certain folks made them. Let's see what Ms. Wheeler just said. Give me the plain language interpretation. Is it five minutes or 10 minutes? Well, I get, I, I well get. it's five minutes according to what you have written. It says a maximum of five minutes. There's no differentiation in the rule that says each time. If it said each time, then we would know that for sure. But right now, from reading what it says, and let me go and, back to it. Right to and that twice. was my thoughts when you or said twice five for five minutes. minutes. I never understood that, Ms. Galloway. I said, let's just keep moving and come and look at it later. It's a maximum of five minutes, five minutes, even though you can speak twice. Maximum of five per time. That ain't what it reads, just, Ms. Galloway. And we talked about um, legislative intent. And the thing about it is that if it had even a comment section to the rules, a lot of times you live in the comments and read that, then that would tell some clarification. But there is no additional commentary to decide this any other way other than the plain way that it's written at this time. So, in, in man, um, Attorney Wheeler, would it be safe to say, as the chairperson, that I have the ability to interpret these rules in speaking no. in a way that is conducive or not? No. No, not really. Because, okay. because it's plainly written. I mean, you do have the, you know, you can always suspend no. the rules, things like that, okay. or, cha you know, or change a specific rule hmm. for a limited period of time. So the, you have other options that you can suspend take. The rules. To, to do that, so like I said, you have other, other things. You can make a motion to do something different than what the rules say. So I can make a motion to not suspend the, all the rules, but I can make a, mo or a request a motion be made that the maximum of five minutes be for both of the times right. and not the sum of the time. That's correct. Madam Chair. Councilman May. And I think that this discussion is important in light of what happened in our special affairs meeting. And I'm glad you asked a question about you as chair. The rules are written and speak for themselves. And over and over I'm seeing in committee meetings and chairs, in my opinion, right or wrong, abusing the chairmanship. So when I heard you read that, knowing what happened today, 
it is very important to get a person chairing a meeting to know what the real rules are and to apply them equally. Now, a chair don't make a motion. Yeah, you can entertain a motion, and my motion would be to suspend the rules so we can take care of the city business. So at this point, win, lose, or draw, I would move to suspend the rules. I see Ms. Fields jockeying for votes already. That's my, that's my motion. There's a motion on the floor to suspend, to suspend the rules. Did you have something, Devine? I'm sorry. Can I get a point, a point of information? Oh, Councilman Gear, I'm sorry. You said it's a maximum of five minutes the first time or in total? Because the way you read it, it seemed like it was the first time, maximum of five minutes, and then it's Point of order. Councilman. It's a motion on the floor to suspend the rules. And he asked for a, a point of information ain't got nothing to do with that particular motion. But, but it does. But it you, does if he okay, decides well, how he wants to, to support this. and or not. Mr. Guerra, can you please continue with your question? So is there a limit on the second time you can speak afterwards or that's included in the maximum? Okay, I can, okay. Please. It says um, the right to speak twice for a maximum of five minutes on the same question the same day. Okay. So just, yeah. It's, a little confusing, but that's yes. what it says. Is your question answered? Yes. Okay. So there is a motion on the floor. Is there any second? Second. The motion has been moved, and there is a second. Is there discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Through you to Mr. Guerrero, can you help me understand what your question just was? That's what I was trying to get to discussion, yeah, right. then go to that type of My discussion. My question was, I thought that you had a, the way that the rules were explained to me, that after five you minutes, you, you gave up the floor, and then it went around, and then you could speak for an unlimited, or as, that, that's what I had thought, the way she had read it the first time. But now I get that it's a maximum of five minutes. Yeah. In total. So and, and, and that's how it's written. Yeah. And so when yeah, Ms. Galloway had said right. that in the it's beginning of the meeting, I didn't want to yeah. say, but I just uh, knew what I had read. And so if you look at if you look at our meetings that you've been here so far, I'm gonna support the motion to suspend the rules because even the people who seem to be a stickler. Ms. Galloway, Ms. Fields, it's tough for them in two minutes from what I've witnessed. I know it's tough for me in two minutes, and particularly when we get into some of the discussions on this business. We don't have a stacked up agenda. I want to see if people can um, feel comfortable being a council person. All these little tedious rules and you know, we making ourselves, in my opinion, look bad in the public. I want to be able to talk to the public. I want to be able to discuss the business. And so I will be supporting the motion to suspend the rules and see if we can have common sense and take care of business. Councilwoman Worthing. While I would like to see the rules at five minutes max each uh, time you speak, at this time, we have done most all of our work in committee meetings, and I see no reason to suspend the rules, especially when some like to abuse their time to grandstand and talk politics. I don't feel the need to be here till midnight. I believe we can get city business done uh, at a reasonable time, and there's nothing complicated on this agenda that I can see, so I will not be voting to suspend the rules. Thank you, Ms. Worthy. Ms. Fields. I'd just like to point out that if the rule is in a discussion, uh, five minutes per council person, there are nine council people, nine times five is 45 minutes. Okay, so it is now a quarter after seven, and I know some council people feel that they would like to spend 24 hours down here, but I think um, since we took so much time in committee, which is where we actually hash out details, I think five minutes each to speak on an issue is more than sufficient. And uh, when you count the number of resolutions and items, I don't think anyone wants to be here that long and wants to use five minutes each council person to speak. So I will not be supporting the suspend the rules motion. Councilman Guerra. Yeah, in, in my opinion though, I feel that five minutes, we're going back and forth and splitting it up is not enough time as 
originally as a, compared to what I thought it was prior to which is splitting it up. And for that reason, I see an issue talking about uh, potentially the auctioning off of guns, sales, and a couple other issues that I could see going back and forth with several council members that may be longer. Uh, I would hope not, and just hope that we can stay reasonably, but I'm going to support spend, suspending the rules, in my opinion. Um, Mr. Griggs and then Ms. Winfrey Carter. All right. If I talk more than three minutes, y'all can just take a shovel and dig a hole and bury me. Any intelligent person can say what they want to say in three minutes or less. I don't even like the five minutes. I'm done. Ms. Winfrey Carter. I, um, I feel that we really need to um, go over the rules and um, address the rules and redo the rules. I think that everyone should be able to um, have dialogue and dialogue freely. So I will be supporting um, suspending the rules. Yeah. And I just want to say for the record, um, the resolution for guns, we are not here to debate whether the guns, we've already approved that. The only reason why the auction was done is because it has already been approved. We are simply here to approve the acceptance of the revenue from that. And so that's a different matter to me. And because of that, I will not be supporting a suspension of the rules. I will, however, entertain a motion to consider making the opportunity to speak twice on a subject matter for five minutes. But outside of that, I will not be suspending. Thank you. No further um, discussion. Roll call, Madam Clerk, on suspension of the rules. Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? No. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Galloway? No. Mr. Griggs? No. Ms. Worthing? No. Mr. Mays? Yes. The vote is four yes, four no. Motion fails. Motion fails. Uh, so Mr. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays? Who will be the timekeeper? Mrs. Davina, our dedicated administrative assistant. And I'll be keeping a close eye on that clock. That sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. So we are now at appointments. Is there a motion? Ms. Madam Chairperson. Council, I mean, uh, Madam Clerk. Just, just for the record, we have uh, appointments of seven uh, individuals to various boards and commissions mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the city council was responsible directly for. Mm -hmm. and they're listed on page uh, three and, four. and page four. Correct. Madam Chair. Councilwoman Fields. Um, I would like to, before I make a motion, I'd actually like to hear the will of the council whether we should take these as a group since we did go over them individually. Um, or we did go over them Would you in like committee. To make the motion? Well, I'll make the motion. We'll see if it, if it okay. uh, passes, or if people want to do it. Because sometimes council people like to introduce their own appointments. So I have no feeling one way or another. But I think we could very quickly conclude what are several appointments. Correct. So I'll make that motion, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, to approve the appointments of one eight zero zero three nine. August A. Jenke, Ward 3, one, uh, to Zoning Board of Appeals, 180040. Reappointment, Zoning Board of Appeals, Chris Zwalla, Ward 4, 180041. Appointment, Zoning Board of Appeals, Heather Marola Kale, Ward 7, 180046. Reappointment, Board of Review, Alan Gilbert, in Ward 7. 180047, reappointment, Board of Review, Vicki Van Buren, Ward 8. 180048, reappointment, Zoning Board of Appeals, John E. Hardy, Ward 2. And finally, 180049, appointment, Zoning Board of Appeals, Jacqueline Jordan, 5th Ward. Madam Chair. 
Councilman Gare. I second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any separations or discussions? I have a discussion. Mr. Griggs? Okay. Some of these have resumes and some don't. Now, this is for Mrs. Brown. Do these reappointments already have resumes in our file? Uh, on the reappointments, we do not have the resumes. They would have uh, been given to us at the initial time of appointment. They did? Yes. Okay. We do have I, them on file. That's mm -hmm. all I have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. I would separate 180040, and I would be separating 180047. Council, I mean, um, Davina. Yeah, that's why I don't, I don't vote on them in the block. I separate them so I can vote yes or no. So whatever the chair and her folks is doing, remember I'm very careful with my time. So unless someone makes a so substitute motion, we're on the motion that we're on. So if there's been a mistake on how it's been done, don't count it against me. My there's time no is valuable. There's no mistake. Right. Okay. She asked for separation. Well, then I, I, would draw, I made a mistake. Thank you for you. correcting me, Davina. And so now there's a motion on the floor to move all of the appointments and or reappointments to approve them. And so there is no separation. And so if, if someone would like to make a substitute motion, there is the ability to do that. If not, we will continue with the motion as it has been made. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Now we got that straight, that how to do it, and it ain't separations. I would move and make a substitute motion or an amended motion, whatever is proper, in order to separate 180040 and 180047. I don't want to vote the same on all the points. So that's my reason for separating. It's been it's been a substitute but, motion but, but has Madam been Chair, made. Madam Chair, let me withdraw that because just because that's how I want to vote, we've always took appointments a certain way and Miss Fields then banked them together. And so you know, I don't know how my colleagues want to vote, so I don't want to assume that. So I don't know if they want to do a substitute to a substitute to a substitute, splitting stuff up. But when she went down that path and you asked for separations, so I would move it the way that I'm looking at it. I would um, do the amended or substitute motion that I don't want 180040 and 180047 in the group that I have to vote on all one way. There's a, a substitute motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. And I, I just want to say for the record, I want to apologize for, to those that are in attendance. Um, my mind went to a master resolution. And normally when we do a master resolution, these appointments can be included in them as well. And they, so they, normally- no, they're no, separate. They I'm, they're always I'm separate. So, I, I guess I didn't, I didn't realize it. And so I want to apologize to everyone. This is new to me and I'm willing to admit that I made a boo-boo. And so the- Madam uh, Chairperson, if I could also clarify something. Mm -hmm. I, I should indicate uh, to the council is especially the new council people, as well as those who are listening. The council has direct appointments for about two boards. Mm -hmm. They can directly appoint, but then it has to approve, be approved by their colleagues. Okay. And in that regard, these two uh, uh, boards, the Board of Appeals, the Zoning Board of Appeals, mm -hmm. as well as the Board of Review, are direct council appointments based upon the ward in which that person lives, as well as the, the ward that that person uh, from the council represents. Correct. So it's the council's person, okay, that they're appointing to that respective board or commission. And, and, and would it be safe to say that, I, that you've said this to us before? 
and, 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 and what I remember you saying is, and Councilman Mays has expressed his, con his concerns, and I respect that, that in many cases it is a matter of respecting that the council person making the appointment and or reappointment knows who they deem would be a good fit for theirs. Exactly. And so typically there is some latitude and support for that council person's decision. Exactly. Thank you. Madam so, Chair. So, Councilman Mays. If no other council people want to say something, and it's the second time around, these rules is designed to speak once and twice on a vote or an issue. What I'm hearing and seeing going on here is a slight of the rules, particularly from the chair. To be discussing and swaying and giving information and limiting us to debate, I just don't like it because that's what happens in between motions. Folks try to give information and sway rules. That's what you did. That's what I'm seeing here, right or wrong, that's my opinion. And so whatever you do, do it. But that's really what didn't happen here. Council when we get in the council discussion and debate, we can play these rules however we want to swim. But I know the reason you have discussion once or twice is to sway votes. Councilman and, and I don't like what I'm seeing and hearing here. I Davina, I don't, I don't, I don't know how many I don't, times you didn't talk. Council remains. You don't have to respond to me. That was my Davina second would, round. Well, you what didn't have you? a second round because how many we rounds voted you on. Get? I didn't have any rounds. Councilman Mays, Davina, could you please respond? So there is a substitute motion on the floor. The substitute motion is to separate one, the appointment or reappointment of 180040. Okay, Davina. Except, okay. 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 So the motion is to approve the appointment 180039, 180041, 180046. Point of order, that's not the motion on that the floor. That is the motion. No, it's not, it's a substitute motion on the floor to Correct. separate. You're right, and in I order to right. separate, we need to identify the ones that are not part of your separation, which this is what we are doing ain't right now. This motion not nothing at this point. You, yeah. Councilman Mays, Davina. Correct, which means that there's two technically motions that would be before us. Is no, that it ain't. It's only one substitute motion before us. Right, but Councilman Mays, you simply want to separate only two out of seven appointments. But Madam Chair, when I vote yes to separate, I'm not voting on the other things. I'm just voting on the substitute motion to separate. Oh, goodness. Oh, well, then they should have took them one at a time if you can't do a motion to separate. They then we need to vote on the together. original motion. Then we just, this is a mess. Because I, I might vote no. I can't vote yes to separate and be voting yes on everything. I might want to vote yes to separate and no. It don't. I mean, y'all ain't got this right. The substitute motion was to separate them two. I made it. Councilman uh, Mays, point of information. If she want to withdraw her motion. Councilman Mays, no. We, wanna, we want to deal with your substitute motion. You have asked to separate 180040 and 180447, of which we This is the February 12, so 2018 City of Flint removing City Council meeting. What is your pleasure with the other seven? Resolutions. Five. Uh, Five. When we get to it, I'll vote my pleasure. But I'm saying I've never heard of what y'all are describing. So if she want to withdraw her motion and take them one at a time, you say the computer don't recognize it. 
Uh, all I can do is tell you. Yeah, I don't give up my right to vote yes on this and no on that. Then if you can't do, if you can't, no. I mean, she shouldn't have lumped Okay, so Davina, point, I'm going to, so if you cannot separate um, resolutions, I mean, the appointments, then we need, then that means there can be no substitute motion. You can't do a substitute motion. Not, well, you can't, right. So, so we're going to. The substitute motion has been made and properly second. Now, what y'all talking about, I'm tripping. So he has to. She shouldn't have lumped them all together. She can withdraw a motion and take them one by one. I can vote yes on some, no on some. It's simple to me. But then next <laughs> the rules is a trip. That's crazy. Really, got the resolution just <laughs> I don't have to vote. Vote down. Ms. Fields, the same thing she got us up to now. She didn't do anything wrong. She didn't do anything wrong. Did she get a lot of that? That substitute motion? No, he has to. He doesn't want to be Right, right, right. But that's his pleasure. But, but we, how do we move the other ones? You, it's a substitute motion. You have to come back and do another, a different motion. So he needs to make these separate. Yeah. This one is a lot of then, then a substitute motion. But can you do that? No, no, I know you're asking. Can, can, can we do um, a motion to approve? One eight zero zero four zero, and then make another motion to approve the other one that he wants to do. Yeah. Yeah. She's saying get to those after the fact. Yeah. Okay, so let's go with the four zero first. Okay, so. So technically, the motion on the floor was to separate, and that is not a proper motion. No, point of order. I changed it from a separation when you had said we could separate, then it was ruled we couldn't separate. My substitute motion was to put them two differently. The separation we've been done with. Councilman Mays, point of information. What is your motion and, motion and your pleasure specifically? Because you can't separate them. So are you moving them for approval? Because that's your only other motion. My motion was to um, take 180040 and 180047 out of the group that And do moved. what with them, Councilman Mays? But we're going to vote on them separately. Then, then you, but you have to make a motion as to what you want to do with them, because you're still using verbiage of separation without saying separation. I move to separate you them, can. and when we finish, then we're going to vote on them separately. My intent has been clear. No, you have to make a motion. Are you saying you want a motion to approve 180040 to begin discussion, Councilman Mays? No, I'm okay. trying not to have then, to vote yes on all of them. That your option is not an option. That your option is not I an option. Have that option. No, you don't. I do have that no, option. You don't. I done made a substitute motion. Do I have the It's not a valid to... motion, though. You ruling a substitute or amended motion to separate two ain't valid? You can't. You you just said before I the public that the separation it. was not. properly second. Councilman May. It's been properly second. And it was wrong. And so now I'm correcting it. You cannot separate well, them. You have to make a motion as to what you want done with them. You're using verbiage of separation without saying separation. You either have to say, I make a motion that we approve 180040 and wait for a second and then move to your second of 180047 or you don't have a proper motion. Oh, so you telling me my motion it's going to supersede the motion to approve all of them because I want to separate two 
and vote on them first. I don't think Ms. Wheeler, can you respond? Because I don't think I'm explaining properly. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try because it seems like the when you do the master resolution, it's really a, a friendly separation that doesn't require a motion. What you have here is you have a motion that was done, which traditionally isn't how it's done, but it doesn't matter. The motion is proper because you can move them as a group. Now you want to pull them back, but you're using the term separation, which is used with the master and I think it would be more appropriate to be able to separate them out to do a substitute motion to move um, the first one for approval so that you can have separated, separate discussion on that one because ultimately you will be voting on it up or down. So that gives you an opportunity to do them separate. It, it's almost the same effect. It's just saying it in a different way. Yeah, ma Madam Chair, through Councilman you to the Mays. city attorney and to the public. It's proper to make a motion and get it second to separate. The intent is no council person, not me, you or nobody else, have to vote the same way yes on six or seven appointments. I might want to vote yes on six and no on two. So the maker of the motion took all of them and Correct. moved them for it approval and tried to lock me into a yes or no vote on all of them. I don't have to vote yes or no on all. Normally, we move them one at a time. The person from that ward make it, but Miss Fields just moved them all together. That don't lock me in. I can, I've been, I've been asked her twice to withdraw her motion so we can get on and take them. Whatever y'all decide here, you won't have me voting. And if I do a substitute motion and then separate one or separate two, then you're going to do another substitute motion. Um, I heard what was said. At the beginning, you said any separations. Somebody said you can't separate. Then it was you can do a substitute motion to separate I've done that. I've Councilman May's point of order. I am not going to allow you to beat the dead horse. I made and acknowledged that I made a mistake. We need to move forward. If you are not going to make a motion, will you allow your colleagues to make it so that we can move city business on Madam and get Chair. done with the... Madam Chair. I'm just asking. Madam Chair, the fact of the matter is it's a motion been made. So you inappropriate have motion. A motion. A inappropriate topic. motion that Madam in Chair. technically there is no motion Madam. except the original motion, Madam Councilman Chair. Mays. Madam Chair, a motion been made and properly seconded. Councilman Madam Mays. Chair. Let me finish. I, I, no, I'm not. Point I'm of order. this week. No. Councilman Mays, no, order. because you are continuing down a road that is not valid. And so because of that, as the chair, Point I have order. the right to bring order to this meeting. Point and you are order. out of order. Point of order. Councilman Mays, Point no, of I'm order. not doing it. Councilman Guerra, Councilman Guerra. I appeal the ruling of the chair. There is an appeal, appeal the of the ruling of the chair. Is there a second for the appealing of the ruling of the chair? Oh, God. It has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Yes. Councilman Mays. Now, are you giving up your discussion? Because you the chair, you made the ruling. Let's see where you're oh, coming you're, from. Oh, you're right. So I know I'm I, right. I, I, no, I, I rule you out of order. And I, Mr. Davis, I want you to hear this. We have spent 20 minutes. Councilwoman Galloway, who is chairing this meeting, acknowledged twice that she made an incorrect ruling, that she recognized the separation and a second of the separation, and she was wrong. We have spent 25 minutes continuing to hash over the fact that she made a ruling that was wrong. So now, Councilman Mays has asked to separate two of the appointments, but he can't. So in order to do what he would like to do, which is take up these two 
um, appointments separately, he would have to make a motion to support them and move them forward. Once he does that, there will be a second. We will have dialogue, and then we will vote on the first one, and then he can make the second one, and we can move on those, and then we can move on the other five. And I am sorry to say it disappoints me when we just want to make theatrics and we, and we support or second an appeal of the decision of the chair that is not valid. And so that is the reason why I moved, I uh, um, ruled Councilman Mays out of order because he is going around a mountain that is not a valid mountain. Either he wants to move them and say, I move that we approve the reappointment of his resolutions or appointments that he has separated, or he yield the floor. That is why I ruled the way that I did. Is there any other further discussion from my colleagues? Yeah, Ms. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Under this appeal of the ruling of the chair, I appeal when I said point of order. Point of order is always in order. You said I'm not recognizing your point of order, okay. and I appeal to you. Anybody who set voting against this appeal is wrong because a point of order is in order. When you say point of order, everything stops. A chair don't tell me I'm not recognizing your point of order. That's what this appeal is. You refuse to recognize my point of order. You abusing the chair. So you done went off into the last discussion, but that ain't what I appeal. And I want to hear you argue why you can ignore out of all chairs in the country a point of order. You clearly, when I said point of order, said it was, I wouldn't recognize it. I then immediately appeal the ruling of the chair. How dare you tell me or any other council person that you will not recognize a point of order? So that's what this appeal is, and I appreciate the second and to all the chairs. How dare you, Ms. Galloway, or any other chair say I won't recognize a point of order? Um, before so you, be Councilman Guerra, I will get you and Ms. Fields. But before that, I would like for um, Attorney Wheeler to just state what she heard. Madam well, Chair, point no. of order. We no. in the middle of council a, discussion. She is our legal representation. Let the council discuss it, and then no. we can hear from her. This is getting ridiculous. I just, I just wanted to mention, because I don't remember it being an appeal of a point of order. Thank you. I mean, that's, that's what I'm saying is that I thought it was an appeal of the decision not to recognize a point of the, order. The, the, uh, the separation. And like I said, I'm, I'm, there's been a lot a said here, so I'm a little bit confused so myself. But it's a mockery. So that was Councilman Guerra. Yeah, I didn't, I was not aware that the it was an appeal on a point of order, and if my understanding that a point of order must always be heard, but I didn't know that's what it was on. I thought it was on the other appeal. Uh, my question, though, is if you were to repeal the appeal, Councilman Mays, and I could possibly, if this is possible, if I can make a motion <laughs> to a substitute motion to vote on. Well, first, we, we are speaking on. This the side, ruling gotta, yeah. of the chair. In the rule. So would you like to, because I was not, um, um, I did not, um, Lord have mercy. You were not under the impression. I did not you. rule him based on his point of information. Okay. I ruled wasn't because he continued. Wasn't a point of information, it was a point of order. And you clearly Whatever. said you Sorry. weren't recognizing the this point of order, order, Madam Galloway. Come on now. Okay, Miss um, Wheeler. This is too much. Councilman Mays continues. You, I'm just saying. I'm not talking order, to you, you right now. No, no, no. I want some legal. I want some legal advice right now because you are unable. I am unable to contain anything. I can't apologize enough. I can't acknowledge my faults enough. You continue to make a spectacle of everything we're doing. For 30 minutes, you have asked for two resolutions. So I want to know what we can do to move forward. Because Councilman Mays is wasting too much time as much as he says we need to do city business. Point of so order. How can I don't we move? like no, you arguing my name publicly. You didn't recognize the point of order. Wheeler. 
What Mr. Guerrero had a solution he and did. you cut him off. He didn't because yes, it's not did. relevant he was to, to me it's not a point of order. To this. He's not yeah, even supposed to be talking. Listen. He's not been recognized. So let, you Mr. need to quit Please. talking. So don't even, much. don't even counsel me. I just I think, don't know how we move on. I think it would be, I mean, like I said, you guys, it's your decision to make, but perhaps you should. Just withdraw, withdraw the appeal correct. and have Councilman Are you guys Guerra, listening, Councilman Guerra? Are you guys I, listening I'm just, to Ms. Wheeler? I'm, I'm just suggesting, recommendation. I'm just su suggesting this so that we can continue on is for the appeal to be withdrawn without any disciplinary action and to have Mr. Guerra make the substitute motion. Not the substitute motion. Well, it, substitute, well, substitute yeah. to another substitute. Right. But, yeah. Yeah, Madam Chair, uh, Councilman I'll Mayor. withdraw the appeal. I think Mr. Davis or somebody seconded, so we'll withdraw that, and we know what we was an appeal in, and then I'll yield to, or if you pick on, call Mr. Garrett, but we know what's happening. So I'll withdraw the appeal, and we'll see what happens next. Huh? Okay, so I would like to make a substitute, substitute motion. No, you don't need it. When, when a substitute is dropped, Oh, it's There's technically no more Miss Madam Chair, he point of wrong. order. I only withdrew the appeal. If you want me to now come back and come withdraw on. the substitute motion, that's a different matter. I'll do that as well. Can I just state what I want to do, and if I can't do it, Davina can tell me I'm wrong? Okay. If, if it's not, the, 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 that's still there. Can I make a substitute, substitute motion to vote on 1800? Point of order. Councilman Mays? If it's proper, let me withdraw the substitute motion. I withdraw the appeal. I withdraw the substitute motion as well, and we'll see where we get from here. Okay, so now I'd like to make a substitute motion to vote on 180039, 1800431, 1800046, 1800048, and 1800049. There's a motion on the floor. Is there any, is there a second? I'll second the motion. Councilwoman Winfrey Carter has seconded. Discussion. Discussion, please, Ms. Fields. I'd just like to point out something because apparently we've spent quite a bit of time on the separating these two. These two appointments, one is for Chris Awala for the fourth ward. Councilwoman, that's not, that, that, that's not this motion. So you, when, when we get to those, we can discuss those. No, I am, this is relevant to this discussion on voting on these. Right, but, but the, the, what you're wanting to speak on is not a part of the, re, the um, appointments that have been moved. Well, let me, I know what you're... It. let me rephrase it then. It's traditional, it's a, a kind of a gentleman's agreement that has been existing on council ever since I've been coming down to City Hall, that when a council person has an appointment, it is their right to have that person appointed, even though technically council votes on it. And it's really kind of bad manners um, to object to that. Um, so, I'm willing to vote on these appointments as a whole because these are made by individual council people for who they think is best to serve that role in their ward. And I may or may not actually think that person is well qualified or have any personal feeling about them, whatever. But since it is that council person's choice, I will definitely support each council person's choice and right to appoint the person of their choosing. Thank you, Ms. Fields. And is there any further discussion yeah. on the substitute motion? Yeah, Madam Chair. So this motion does not include 180040 and 180047. Would that be fair to you, Madam Chair, to Mr. Guerrero? That's correct. Okay, so those two are out. So this would be voting on the appointments of Heather Kale, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Hardy, um, Mr. August Janker, and then um, Jacqueline Jordan. 
I'll say to my colleagues who want to argue that you should appoint whatever council person, say, let bring Mr. Trump and see if I don't separate that one. It ain't no rule that I have to vote for whoever somebody brings. I don't have to vote for who they bring. I can question them. I can ask to meet them. I can want to look at their rev resume. So everybody who want to put out here that I have to vote just because a council person brought them, bring me Trump and bring some more. I do not have to vote on what folks bring. And normally, it's been a standing tradition that if you are the council person appointing, you move it for approval. It ain't normal that people just be moving everybody's appointment. Normally, they'll go one by one. Mr. Guerrero, if you had one, you would move that appointment. If Mr. Griggs had one, they'd move that appointment. So folks who try to make you think they got historical knowledge, they have in selective knowledge. I've been around for 30 years and I know who moves their appointments, and this has been some different. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Madam, is there any, okay, Madam Mr. Chair, Griggs. Um, is there a motion to separate two of these? The motion includes moving all except those two right now. Okay, I've got two more that I want separated. Well, we, 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 we're, we're past that, Mr. Uh -huh. Griggs. Are we? Why are we past that? Why can't I separate two more? Because we're on discussion for the substitute. When can point I separate point the order. order? He when can, can I, do when it. Can if I he separate wants. these other two? He can. he can do another substitute? You have a sub what is your substitute motion, Mr. Griggs? Okay. I uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we separate one eight zero zero three nine and one eight zero zero four eight. Four eight. So we back to my motion. There is a substitute substitute motion. No, it'd be the vote. Is there is there support I mean a motion to oh yeah you can't separate. You have to make a motion to approve them or not. Because this right now there let me just Okay, Mr. Griggs, wait, 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 order, order, please. Mr. Griggs, right now there is a motion to approve those, and so what you're saying is you want to make a motion to deny them? What are you saying? Well, he, he has to say something because now this yeah. is turning into a spectacle. Well, it's a game. Is what it's it not is. a game, Mr. Griggs, if some of us don't act as though it's a game. All right, I'll stop with the game. Thank you. And so we have a motion on the floor to approve. Mm-mm, mm-mm, no. We're leaving it the way to do What? Point of order. You got to see if he, this he is dropped. He dropped. He dropped. <laughs> he withdrew. He said, I'll stop making the games. Yeah. OK. So he didn't. No, he, he said, I'll stop playing the game. Yes. He, he withdrew everything. OK. So we are almost there. I promise. It seems like it anyway. OK. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none. Madam Clerk, roll call on the moving of 180039, 180041, 180046, 180048, and 180049 for approval. Okay. Correct. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. The vote is eight yes, zero no. What is Adam the pleasure Chair. of this vote, Councilwoman Fields? I'd like to move item number 180040 for approval. The motion has been made. Ms. Worthing? I second that. Ms. Worthing is second. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, I will not be supporting this particular um, appointment. And um, I've got my reasons, but I won't be voting in favor of this appointment. Thank you. 
Is there any other discussion? Any other discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Briggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? No. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. The vote is seven yes, one no, and one eight zero zero four zero. Thank you, Madam Clerk. What is the pleasure of this, Mr. Griggs? Yes, I'd, I might, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, vote on this reappointment of, of Ms. Van Buren, 180047. There's a motion on the floor to approve the appointment, reappointment. Is there a second? Ms. Worthing? I second that. Thank you. It's been moved and supported. Is there any discussion? Yeah. Councilman Madam, Mays. Madam Chair, I will not be voting for this appointment of Vicki Van Buren. Um, I know I had voted for the short term in order to fill it, and now this is for a longer term. I guess this would be a reappointment for a three-year term. And I'm going to make it clear that I'm not supporting it, and I'm not supporting it based upon things that I see and know. No disrespect to you, Mr. Griggs, but you know, it was certain people who was down here, and there's certain people here now. I want the city to move without all the argument and discussion, and it might, but just me, for what my experience, I won't be voting for this approval. But I did give it to you for the short term, but I'm not fitting to go to three-year term. Thank you. Thank you, um, Ms. Fields. I'd just like to say that I will be supporting this uh, appointment. Number one, it's Mr. Griggs's choice. It is his appointment. This is who he wants appointed. So I will be supporting that. But also, uh, I'd like to mention that uh, Vicki Van Buren served this city well on city council for multiple years. And I think she certainly can handle being appointee on the Board of Review. And I'd like to thank her for all of her years of service and for her willingness to serve yet still. Thank you, Ms. Fields. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, Madam Roll Call. I mean, Madam Clerk, Roll Call. Okay. Ms. Winfrey Carter. Pass. Yes. Ms. Galloway. Yes. Mr. Griggs. Yes. Ms. Worthing. Yes. Mr. Mays. No. Mr. Davis. Yes. Mr. Guerra. Yes. Ms. Fields. Yes. The vote is seven yes, one no. Licenses, Madam Clerk? Uh, we do not have any at this time. Moves us to master resolution. What is the pleasure of this body? Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, I would move the master resolution for approval. That would be 180034. That's the sexual assault kit, 180035. That's the Rutherford versus the City of Flint okay. Circuit Court lawsuit. 180037 policies and guidelines, um, consideration of property exemption applications, um, 180038, the policy amendment filing protest by letter, 180032, budget amendment transfer of funds, fleet maintenance fund balance. Uh, about 950,000, I see that figure, it could be more. 180033.1, the resolution recognizing the gun sale. And 180036, mm -hmm. a multi-year agreement with Dearborn National Insurance Company. And finally, 180045 Settlement Smith versus the City of Flint at all that lawsuit settlement claim. If there's any add on or resolution I miss before um, I end with that motion with them specific ones, Madam Chair, if you give me a sign, I mean, Madam Ch Clerk, through you, Madam Chair, to the clerk, if that's the master resolution and nothing is missing, 
Then I so move master resolution for approval. It's been moved. Is there a second? Mr. Guerra? Second. It's been moved and properly second. Is there any discussion or endorse? Is it proper to do separations now? Is there any discussion in our separations? Yeah, Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Um, this is going to be to the chairman, Mr. Del Maroney. I'm going to separate 180037. He talked about that in public comment. And other than that, I have no other separations at this time. Any other separations? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call. Okay, Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. The vote is 8 yes, 0 no on the master resolution. Councilman Mays? Councilman Mays, you made a separation. Yeah, on the separation, if I may, Madam Chair, Mr. Del Maroney, who chairs the public review board has knowledge about this. He's making a recommendation about rental properties versus just homeowner. And I want to see if I can hear from him elaborate a little more on this. Um, Mr. Through you, Madam Chair, if you allow. Point Mr. of information, Councilman Mays. Are you making a motion? No. I'm asking to hear from Mr. Del Marone. I know. It's a motion already been made to separate. I'm, we okay. And the reason why I'm asking is because in an effort to maintain time, um, I want to know it specifically, are you asking Mr. Del Maroney specific questions or, because I'd like to know because I want to benefit from the dialogue as well. So your time hasn't started, but I want to know where we're going before I say yes, that Mr. Del Maroney can come and speak before the council. I made it clear I wanted him to comment as to this ordinance. I've made it that clear twice. Whatever you choose to do or don't do is your business. Is this? The reason why I wanted to know specifically is because just like Councilman Mays, I paid attention to what Mr. Del Maroney came up and spoke to this council about. What Mr. Del Maroney raised tonight is not part of this resolution. What Mr. Del Maroney brought up is a very good thing that this council needs to look at. I am not certain that tonight is the night for that to be discussed. In an effort to ensure that there is proper communication, I am more than willing to see if one of my colleagues will allow Mr. Del Maroney to come before us in a committee meeting. But what he shared in his public comment was that he was concerned that renters didn't receive the same poverty exemption that homeowners do. That is not this. And so I don't want to commingle two separate things in an effort to stay and maintain and be on point for what we're discussing tonight. So I'm doing that respectfully and seeing if maybe a committee meeting with him being able to share those concerns is more proper. But before you, Mr. Guerra, I would like to ask Mr. Mays what's his pleasure now that I've shared that. My pleasure was clear. I asked for Mr. Del Maroney. He's the chair of the Public Review Board. This is under his auspices, no different than I would ask for Susan Wilcox or the chief of police. The long diatribe you gave to say no to me and to him, we get it. So, you know, that's a no, Mr. Del Maroney. And regardless of how they say it, they denied you and me under these rules that the chair can deny that request. That's not so, true, Councilman Mays. And I want to read to you. Madam, I want to read to you Madam, what Madam your rules Galloway, say. Madam Galloway, Madam Galloway, why do you interrupt folks when they wait to get the flow? Don't um, just interrupt Attorney and Wheeler. Go to Point of because information. You don't agree with what point of information. Say. The chair is making a point of information. 
Um, Attorney Wheeler, can you read that part of the chair's option as the chairperson for the record, please? Right, it just says that the, during a debate on an, an, uh, any agenda item, the guest speaker time allowed shall be determined by the presiding chair. So that's, that would be your decision. Madam, Thank you. Madam Chair, if I may continue, we know that you had the option, yes or no, to let him come up. That's what I said. I said you denied me and him. We heard your ruling when I asked for him to come up to discuss some under his auspices. And so we moving on. You didn't have to give a point of information. We know what the rules say. So you accuse us of wasting time. And it really might be you because of a lack of understanding. And you interrupt us constantly when we legitimately got the oh flow. This is something I separated. Mr. Del Maroney, I heard what you said. And this stuff you know better than me. And so in light of the separation, Madam Chair, I'll be voting no since he can't clarify some of this. He is the expert. He's the chairman of the review board, and that's what this is. So for the sake of time and rudeness, let us be council people and quit doing wrong. Y'all can vote, move and vote. I'll vote. Mr. Del Maroney, um, if you would like to address the council, I am going to allot you three minutes to do so. Madam Chair, my Councilman intent, Mays, I have not. My intent is to ask him questions. No, not we're to not dialoguing. The council. Well, I'm sorry, Councilman Mays. Well, if you want to put your, you if you want to do your questions right now, because your five minutes are up. Okay. Right. Then both. So you spent all that time. Okay. You, you so. Used up my minutes. So a question to my colleagues, so that in all fairness, did any of my colleagues have any question for Mr. Del Maroney, Mr. Guerra? Yeah, I was. I was going to ask you if we could put that discussion item on Governmental Ops Committee next time, too, if you want to come speak and have any more questions that we may have asked that, at, that last longer in the three minutes that she allocates you. If, if, that, if that's okay. Well, that's so, so I don't know if that's the, the pleasure of the um, council. And so, Mr. Del Maroney. I don't know if you have more to add because it sounds like you addressed this when you came before us with your public comment. And so is there anything in addition that you would like to share with this council that you didn't get the opportunity to share during your public speaking? Well, it, to the extent that we would include renters to get some relief on their water bill, that might go beyond the the let me say the scope of what the board of review can do right it might take a, a resolution or some other type of thing to allow that to happen um, it only seems okay. in fairness that you know we have i believe a majority of renters here in the city of flint and if you have two <coughs> households uh, you know that are identical the number of people and everything else those who are buying a home have an opportunity for some relief and those who are rent relief on their water bill those who are renters do not and I think in fairness to the community all should be treated somewhat equal in the sense of trying to get some relief on their water bill uh, the other thing to look at and I, I've said over the years that we've run into a situation, it's a twofold um, qualification, I'll call it. So if you're owning a home, you have to qualify on the income that you make. And then based on the amount of your property taxes, you have to qualify on that. Everyone will st would st still has to pay some property tax, okay? But what's happening over the years, now property values are going up, but what has happened over the years is people would qualify on the income level, okay, but then because the value of their homes have dropped so much, which would require a reduction in, in the property taxes that mm -hmm. one pays uh, based on the taxable value, they don't get any relief. 
So, uh, you know, that's another issue to look at where you qualify an income, but because the property taxes are so low, you don't get any relief because, you, like I said, you have to pay some tax. And believe me, there are people that come before the board through no fault of their own. They may have been injured on the job. They may, may be a, 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 a veteran where their ability to make income is really curtailed because of their injury to the service to our country, because of an injury and no fault of their own, just you know, at home or something. Um, and, and they're not able to get any relief because that property tax is so low, but they're still having a problem paying that amount. Uh, but you know, going back to the renters, I, I think it's only fair. I mean, you know, why should one class of people get a, a break and not the other? And so I think it's important for council to look at that. It may not come through the, the poverty exemption under, under the uh, property tax saying, but it could be something different that council could do. Thank you, Mr. Del Morani. Um, I'd like to make a referral um, that, that we um, see if we can meet Mr. Gare's request to um, have this discussion on governmental ops. But in, with the referral, I'd like to ask Stacy Bassey. Is that, am I saying her name right? Um, Madam Chair. If, wait, I'm making a referral, Mr. Griggs. Uh -huh. um, if what is being asked is in line with whatever federal guidelines and or um, state guidelines, and if there is a consistent. OK. And so. Um, to make sure that there's consistency to see if there's any other communities that are doing this. So that would be my referral. So is there any other discussion? Yes. On this item, Mr. Griggs? I hope I didn't miss anybody. Mr. Griggs? Yeah. I was uh, six years on the Board of Review with Mr. Del Maroney, and we didn't talk to renters. The Board of Review is for property owners property, personal property taxes, and commercial property taxes. We never reviewed any renters. The Board of Review is not for renters. Savvy? Oh, he did say that? Okay, I'm just trying to shorten it up. Uh, Madam Chairperson. <laughs> um, Mrs. Um, Madam Clerk. Yeah, ju just for the record, uh, Stacy Bassey, the uh, Board of Review uh, staff person, did come to our last committee meeting, and I think she was there kind of prepared to answer whatever questions anyone may have had. And I just well, needed to indicate that to, right there, to the bang, board. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, roll call. Mr. Griggs, this is on 180037. Policies and guidelines for poverty exemptions. What was that again? Our last resolution. Our last resolution. Oh. On page 180037. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? I abstain for the reason that the chair say my five minutes was used up. I didn't get to ask uh, my Mr. question. Davis? So. My point of order, I get to state of my record what I, why I abstain. You must state why you abstain, Ms. Brown. It's just like you say, wait for roll call. May I finish my reason? So I abstain because it was ruled that, um, by the chair that my five minutes was up. I couldn't dialogue and ask Mr. Del Maroney questions on this. Um, resolution and I don't know if it's new added or old, so I abstain. Thank you. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Ms. Galloway? Yes. The vote is seven yes with one abstention. 
We do not have any. Introduction and first reading of ordinances. We do not have any at this time. Second reading and in, 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 enactments of ordinances. None. Um, discussion items. Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I would like to see if I can have Susan Wilcox come forward. We, we will, Councilman Mays. Ms. Wilcox, we will get you. Um, but I think there's still some, I, I'd like for you to specify what your discussion item is, and then we'll decide um, whether Ms. Wilcox comes up and how long it will be. Madam Chair, I think you and the whole council know that we finna discuss them grants. Is that good enough for you to ask her to step forward? What you knew what it was, didn't you? No, Council. Oh, okay. Well, that's what it is. So now we. So are we gonna? Her? And so, so would it be proper then, if um, I allow Miss Worthing? Because did you want to speak on the same thing? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Miss Worthing, now that Councilman Mays has spoken. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Ain't it getting a little ridiculous how you doing this councilman over here? If I request to speak to Ms. Wilcox and I got the flow, why are you not doing it? Councilman Mays, first of all, I do not have to let you go back and forth with Ms. Wilcox. So Madam in an Chair, effort to, come on, Councilman Mays. In an, point of order. Councilman Mays. You don't have to I thought you asked me a me question. Do, are yeah. you gonna, do you want me to answer your question or no? I just want you to be fair. I'm trying and to. And quit trying to play me. I'm not. Okay. Would you like me to answer I why? I had the floor and I asked to speak like normal to Ms. Wilcox. You said you wasn't and went to Ms. Worth. Well, but First Council you told me to give you what the discussion was. I right. said you knew. And Councilman, just I like didn't she know. Said, it's the same thing. But I didn't know what you wanted. And so all I'm saying is if Mrs. Worthy has the same. Oh, Go to Ms. Worthy. Ms. Worthing, can you just be patient just for a second? Sure. Councilman Mays, um, in an effort to ensure that Ms. Wilcox doesn't just come up and speak to you, but that she has the ability to address this whole council, I promise that you will get the time that is allotted for you. But I believe that Ms. Worthing has something that is relevant and will be answered by Miss Wilcox as well, but it will allow us to use our time wisely when she does come to the podium instead of shooting back and forth. And, I, and, and so I, I don't know if, if, if that's okay with you, Mr. Mays, because if you would like, you can exhaust your five minutes, uh, ask Miss Wilcox to speak, and then we can allow everybody to go around, if you want to. Point of order, they saying, done told Mays. you that's for resolutions. It's not relevant to five minutes. You all But there, no, that. Councilman that's Mays. That's what they told you. Councilman Mays, Ms. Worthing, I recognize you. Please, okay. please share what you'd like to share. I would like to make a motion to reconsider resolution 180011 with, uh, with the intention of, of postponing that motion. So you're making a motion for reconsideration and what is the, I know you said the number of the resolution, but what is the resolution? The redistribute, re allocation, allocation <laughs> of grant funds for, I forgot the three exactly, for the fire truck, the building, and the North Flint investment project. Okay. So there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Is there a second? Thank you. Are you? Can, can you second? Um, I'm not sure. Maybe no, I, wait, you can't. Can she vote? On a vote to reconsider, maybe I can't second. I know I can't make the motion, but. She can't second. She, she can't. can't. She, she voted. But she, oh, I didn't think that she could. I didn't think that she could. Yeah, she I thought she, 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 she could. If not, perhaps. She can't. Well, no wait, wait a minute. We want to find. Right. <clears throat> I don't think, I don't think they can 
second it either. Mm -hmm. But I think when we check Robert's rules, they can't second it either. Well, that would appeal the money. That would Remember, we I got an idea. They can't. They can't. I think we're in agreement. We we she she might have voted with her. She might have voted with him. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think we checked it earlier. So there's a, we just wanted to check the rules. So it is proper. So it's been a, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I will second that motion. Ms. Fields has, um, the, the motion has been made and properly second. And so um, is there discussion? There are matters. Councilman, oh, Councilman Gear. Yeah, it's, so just for clarification, what, what was your, what was the reason for your, uh, can I ask what her reason was for? Absolutely. I just feel that we need more questions to be answered, especially with the concerns from HUD on the reappropriations of, or reallocations of these funds. So uh, I would like for us to be able to, to discuss it either in the next committee meeting or a special meeting so that we know that our vote ha is transparent and correct based on requirements from HUD okay. for ba that. Based on that, um, I know that this motion also considers the money for the fire truck and fixing the building that is currently, the roof was possibly gonna cave in. So is it possible to make a substitute motion? To, Cause I know the contract hasn't been signed yet. So help, help me walk me through this with, <laughs> with the legal aspect. To, uh, a, to vote to approve this resolution with the substitute motion that the contract is not signed until we get certification from HUD that it is completely legal. Request for information. Is that possible? Since wait a this minute. wait a minute is a um, vote for reconsideration. Right, I don't think you yeah. can offer a substitute. That was a question. If I could in the future, if huh. this is voted on, that was the question. Okay. Okay. So, Ma Madam Chair. Right. Right. I don't know how this works, but it's for the North Flint re Investment Group only, and the uh, I don't know. No, no. As, for the record, all, okay. for the record, okay. This is not a reconsideration as it relates to who the funds are going to. So we want to make sure that we eliminate that piece of it. This is not that. The reconsideration. And, I, and I'm going to um, share, because Councilman um, Winfrey, who is not able to be here today, and I have been talking about this, it's not about who the funds are going to. The reconsideration is a piece that whether we can table it is simply to make sure that whatever HUD is requiring, that it's done, and those answers haven't been done yet or haven't been received yet, and Ms. Wilcox will come up and speak to that, because we spoke about this in committee. So hopefully we shouldn't be here all night because we have been talking about it. But so I want us to not um, focus on who the monies are allocated to. We know that we need the fire department to get funds. We know that the building needs the roof. We know that we agreed to help a part of the north side re redevelopment. But this is simply about what are the guidelines and the processes in which HUD requires for us to allocate funds. So that's where the transparency piece is for the people that are calling me. I can't speak, they're not asking why are you giving money to one organization or the other. They're asking are we doing this properly because if not, there can be some penalties. So I don't know if that makes sense. Because I don't want to get into this dialogue about what the funds are for, because that's not the reason why we're reconsidering. If some of you are for that reason, um, that's your prerogative, and I'm not saying that that's not a part of it as well, but more than anything, we want to make sure that we're in compliance with what HUD is saying, everybody's on the same page. Um, Councilman Gear, I don't think you were done. No, or maybe yeah, you and, I, and I get what you're saying is you're, you're the transparency idea, which is a good idea especially, but the fact is that I, I know that these were all time sensitive, so I don't know how, the, I don't remember that's what it was stated back then. I don't know if Ms. Wilcox can speak to this. Uh, to speak. I don't, I don't want to, you know, reconsider. Okay. You say it's not about that, but when if you reconsider something, that messes up the deal we get with the fire truck. I can't say I see not putting a fire truck on the streets. That's my opinion, so I want to know if she can speak to that. That's fine. That's a concern for me. Okay. Um, well, look at it. She's going to speak. 
Go ahead, Ms. Wilcox. Oh, now he can answer. No, no, no. Uh, Ma Madam Chair. Can, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Um, Ms. Fields, did you have some? Before you start speaking, Ms. Wilcox, I just want you to be patient because I'm sure that the questions that you are hearing are not new questions. So I, I, I doubt that you'll have a problem remembering them. I can them. wait. Okay. Well, I'd just like you, to say that. Are you that. doing, Maurice, I'm sorry. Are you doing what? this? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Fields. Oh. Um, my vote on this, this vote to reconsider the total resolution that gave the total of, I don't know, it was 400 and some thousand, okay, is not based on who the individual three grantees were in that. My vote on this is based on, there seems to be still many questions from HUD, from our department about have we done the right amount of money reprogramming without doing a public notice, public hearing, et cetera. Um, our department feels that their interpretation of what we could reprogram from what years, et cetera, based on our citizens' participation plan is allowable. HUD apparently has had a different vision of it. I would vote to reconsider until we get this all straightened out and it's very clear because I don't think anyone wants funding to be taken away from the city. And that that could be a potential ramification if we don't do this all correctly. So I don't think it's so timely that we couldn't afford to wait until next week committee meeting and one more council meeting. And so we could have all the information in front of us and make that decision in a measured professional way especially since I think we also need to have more discussion on eventually who gets the <coughs> money because we didn't have any public participation in that decision so I think there's still just a lot of questions to be asked and we need to give the public an opportunity to ask some questions even in public speaking at the next council meeting. So I will be voting to support the vote to reconsider just based on let's get all of the technicalities down pat so there are no questions and everybody can feel secure in their vote and why they're voting this way. Madam Chair. Right. So I want to, I want to, yeah, I want to ask. Um, wait, who was, Councilman um, Davis, and then Mr. Griggs. And, Madam Chair, on the motion of please. reconsideration, mm -hmm. uh, my concern is, a question would be, after the transparency of the hood or how accurately we did whatever Ms. Wilcox done with our decision, I don't know how it was done, Ms. Wilcox, but my concern is, at the end of the day, is the motion going to still pertain to the fire truck as well as the other mm -hmm. building down on north side as well as the North Flint reinvestment? Mm -hmm. Is we going to end up, at the end of the day, after the transparency and the public comment, will we still be funding the project Mr. Flynn all uh, so wrongly been attacked with? personal attack, and I know the, the spirit of this, I, it don't take a rocket scientist to figure out what's going on. Is the money going to be allocated to the north side for North Flint reinvestment after the reconsideration? Councilman Griggs. My turn. Mm -hmm. uh, we really need this fire truck. Is there a way to separate this fire truck out of this? We'll, Can we'll I make Ms. a motion we'll to do Wilcox that? that? Huh? We'll let Ms. Wilcox answer that. Yeah. Ms. Wilcox is part of the fire truck? Yeah, well, she's a part of the allocation. Huh? She's a part of the allocation answering those questions. Well, I don't know how the fire truck got wrapped up into this, but. Uh, Madam Chair, point of information. 
I think we need clarification. If this is a motion to reconsider a vote on a resolution, I don't think you can reconsider part of the vote. Oh, I think yeah. you have to reconsider the entire vote, and then, <coughs> and then later you can make, make other motions mm -hmm. to do That's what true. you want to do. Uh, just to uh, address these concerns um, about the North Flint uh, investment, it, no, there is no attack, there is no uh, conspiracy. It, it is solely on making sure that we have followed our guidelines and um, to address Mr. Davis's concerns, if everything is followed correctly, then yes, those funds can go back to, to where it was intended. I mean, obviously that's why we wanna reconsider is to just make sure that we can appropriate these funds to these three uh, uh, departments and projects and that it was done correctly with public transparency. Uh, otherwise, uh, then no, we would have to change that based on uh, the ruling of HUD and the concerns that we have. So uh, there, in no way is this an attack. I think we need to, to vote yes so that we can just get more information at this time. Madam Chair. Councilman Mays. Yeah, Madam Chair, I'm sure Davina couldn't keep up with your time, Ms. Worthen's time, Guerrero Santino's time. If you kept up with everybody's time, um, Madam Clerk Davina, tell me who didn't use what time. Did you, were you able to keep up with it? I know it's tough to do. And if the rule said everybody speak once before somebody speak twice, I seen that violation with Miss Worthy. So I done looked and I sat here patiently. Point and of I information, Councilman Mays, I don't know if you noticed, but nobody else had asked to speak. I haven't even spoken once. You done spoke. I haven't. I've been you chairing. Done spoke. I've been chairing. The chair is still subject to the same five minute rules, Miss Galloway. You spoke and you done spoke. Now you might have didn't hear yourself speak on the debate and the subject matter, but the record is clear, you spoke. The chair can't abuse the rules. The chair don't get 15 minutes and everybody else get five. The chair don't get to speak twice before all other council people, particularly when you're speaking on the, the meat of the discussion. You didn't just chair the meeting, you got off into the debate and the argument. And Ms. Worthen did too. So if I have to use my five minutes to highlight these abuses, because I'm, I'm tired of y'all putting my name out in the public. I can handle myself. And so sometime I lay back. I look at the different treatment and what you see when it's the north side, me, Flint. And then when y'all over there doing y'all thing, I, I guarantee you, the record will show, everybody on Channel 17 watch it, Ms. Worthen chimed in twice. Mr. Guerrero, even though he was talking to him, went back and forth, I don't know how to interpret that. Can't nobody keep up with all these minutes and five minutes rule, but remember on the thing with Mr. Chris Del Maroney, my five minutes was up. Ms. Galloway done spoke. We don't know what her minutes is, and it's a motion on the floor. And so somebody tell me if these resolution rules apply, because this ain't a resolution, through you, Madam Chair, to Davina, because I'm really trying to figure out how to take care of business, and Mr. Guerrero, I was overjoyed when you asked for Ms. Wilcox and was getting her by the chair, and I asked and couldn't get her. I threw you, uh, Madam Chair, to Davina. Is it something you want to say? Is these rules don't apply? What's going on? I'm confused, and I'm trying to take care of some important business and follow their rules so they can quit attempting to embarrass me, which they ain't doing. They looking foolish themselves. We ain't under comments, we under discussion item. We're in discussion. I put a new. They kind of added something to it. I asked to suspend the rules. They voted that down. But they want to be a stickler for rules and ain't foul. You went through liquor licenses, you went through first reading, second reading, a 
additional discussion items. Right. That rule is only under resolution. If you want to be technical, again, that's why I didn't do it under school. And I did it under resolution. That's right. But I did do it now. So that's good, um, Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. If if them rules don't apply to motions, no. and I've been operating with them rules oh, since Carrie Nelson, Scott Kincaid, and Jack Madam and y'all, okay. and y'all okay. been e implementing them, even under Mr. Chris Del Maroney stuff. Okay. I don't know. May I finish? Because you, she say these rules don't apply. Well, actually, I said, actually, I got the flow. And so I was observing the different treatment with Worth and back and forth, what's happening with Guerrero. I'm still waiting from the beginning to ask Ms. Wilcox some specific <laughs> questions. And I waited patiently. And I'm going to ask a second time, can I ask Ms. Wilcox some questions on this matter? You can. OK, thank you. And I'm going to be. Yes, Ms. Wilcox, you hear the goings on. You tell me any way you want to tell me what we need to know as we make these decisions from your expertise. What's your recommendation? What do you say do? Once I hear from you, then I'll make a decision as to what we do up here. I want to first listen to you, and then I might have a couple follow-up questions. Um, wait, 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 OK. Ms. Wilcox, one second. I just want to do some logistical. Um, we're going to, yeah, Councilman May, shake your head if you want to. Um, but we are going to make some determinations on time here, because we're not going back and forth. And so, Ms. Wilcox, um, he's being very vague in what he's saying. Beg your pardon, I'm vague. being what? Vague. Vague. vague, the word is vague. I don't think I'm being okay. vague. Okay. I don't appreciate that. And so, that. Ms. Wilcox, I'm doing my best to not, because we need pertinent information from you, and so I don't want to um, limit your time. But I don't want there to be the inability for everybody to kind of go along. So I was hoping that everybody would get their concerns out and that you would have the ability Ms. to come Galloway. up and answer those. And so, so that's why, Councilman Mays, you can say what you want to say. I want to chair. I'm waiting to hear from her. Exactly. But my question is, how long of a dialogue do you, would we you need? We don't know, because you steady know. talking and talking Council, and Council talking. Councilman Mays, are you kidding me? Yeah, we waiting to hear from her. Go ahead, Ms. Wilcox. Um, I heard a few points, <clears throat> a few questions, I should say. And um, I'd like to start just by saying that uh, regardless as to whether the motion to reconsider is approved or not by the Flint City Council, because the issue has been raised and we are in conversation um, with HUD, we need to, and I've shared this before and I'll share it again, we need to make sure it's in all of our best interests as trustees, all of us, to make sure that this is done properly. So <clears throat> um, I think that there's, it's been characterized as concerns, and I said it earlier, I believe that they are, we are in discussion with HUD, HUD has questions, and we are working to resolve those questions, to make sure that they receive the answers that they need, and that we proceed appropriately, as it is in all of our best interests. So, <clears throat> as we work to execute contracts based upon that resolution, these issues were raised, and we have begun those discussions with HUD. We will not move forward whether or not a motion to reconsider is approved by the Flint City Council until those issues have been resolved. So I think that that's important to note um, because we're all on the same page here. We need to do things appropriately. We need to do things um, according to the plans that we have in place. That being said, there's a, couple, <clears throat> there's a couple things that have been reported incorrectly. One was uh, raised in the committee meeting, meeting earlier regarding the percentage. So I think it was reported in MLive, and at the last committee meeting I had not seen the article, so I was not familiar with the specific um, comments made in the, in the MLive article, but I, it was raised that there's a 10% requirement. And that was based upon a conversation, I think, by the reporter with the public affairs um, official in, in the Region 5. Um, that is based upon the fact 
um, based upon the question as to whether you, your municipality has an adopted substantial, um, uh, substantial amendment process through an adopted citizens participation plan. plan. The City of Flint does. Our, we have a citizens participation plan that was adopted in 2013, and it does spell out the process for substantial amendments. Um, that process is spelled out, and um, I know that uh, Mr. Woodson spoke earlier and passed out some information. The actual, <clears throat> the actual question as to what the cap is that triggers a substantial amendment is defined in our citizens participation plan. And so the plan itself dictates, um, and the specific language is, uh, the City of Flint will amend its approved consolidated plan whenever it makes substantial amendments to the plan. Substantial amendments are defined as follows. One, a change in allocation priorities. This is based on your consolidated plan. Two, a major change in the method of distributing funds. Three, the addition or deletion of a priority objective from the consolidated plan five-year strategy unless due to circumstances not under the control of the City of Flint. Four, a significant reorientation of program funding priorities in the consolidated plan five-year strategy due to a major change in local economic conditions or population characteristics. And five, and this is where the, our, our plan defines that, New activities exceeding 15% of the federal program grant, which is CDBG home or ESG, year from which the funding is derived, unless arising from state or federal declarations of emergencies or disasters, and activities occur with the city with the city with city council review and approval. So the <clears throat> the threshold is 15% of the federal program grant, in this case CDBG year from which funding is derived. That is the process we have utilized to determine substantial amendments since 2013, since this plan was adopted. So in this case, because the funding is coming from several different program years, it does not constitute a 15%, it does not meet that 15% threshold. So um, that's, that's one piece. So the 10% uh, uh, figure that was quoted in MLive is actually incorrect. And it's based upon um, HUD has it's kind of a de minimis rate. If a community has not adopted a citizen's participation plan, that 10% rate is what HUD uses as kind of a baseline threshold. Because we have, we follow our own adopted CPP. And the other, I think, comment that was made um, in the article was that the city of Flint um, is required to adopt a citizen's participation plan. That's absolutely accurate. It made it sound like we have not adopted a citizen's participation plan, and we have. And so I just want to clarify that those two points in the article are actually incorrect. So um, there was also a question raised tonight about timeliness. Councilman Guerra raised that, and I said in the last committee meeting that these were timely. Um, these are time sensitive in the context of, as I talked about, reprogramming, um, generally, um, the fire truck, obviously, uh, there was an acquisition question for another activity and there's some pending urgently needed repairs. It is also timely related to our requirement to spend money. So this actually helps us. I would not say that a week or two delay um, would, would hurt this project. So, but yes, I do feel it is timely. It does, there are activities that can spend relatively quickly and will help us meet our timeliness ratio, as I stated um, two weeks ago. So I do feel they are timely. However, as I, as I started out, I think we have to do our due diligence, and it is definitely in all of our best interest to dot our I's and cross our T's and make sure we're doing that. And so we have every intention of doing that. Um, there was another comment earlier about a comparison of this project to Smith Village um, repayment. We have never repaid funds, and I'm not saying that because HUD has their own kind of um, sanctions that they can institute for different violations. I'm not saying that they couldn't, but this comparison I think is not relevant. We've never paid money back in my recollection for violating a citizen's participation plan. There is usually, um, if, if there have been um, issues related to that, we've had to demonstrate why um, we felt we did not violation, violate a citizen's participation plan, and there have been um, kind of corrective actions that have been required. 
Since the, this 2013 plan has been put in place, um, we have not had any uh, violations of citizens' participation plan requirements. And as I said, I think that's a moot point because we're working to resolve these issues, questions with HUD, before we execute any, um, any contracts. Um, <clears throat> there was a, another question um, about the process itself. The substantial amendment process is actually what dictates the level of review that's required. So if it does not meet a threshold requirement, in this case, our position is that it does not, um, the level of review is different. It's considered a minor amendment, and it does not require a 30-day public comment period. It does not require publishing in the newspaper. And so that is what um, that is what has guided the decision making based upon our substantial amendment criteria. So um, if it was, if it is determined, and I'm not infallible, and HUD, a lot of the regulations are interpretive, so there's a lot of dialogue that goes on actually between our department and HUD regularly because there's, there are a lot of gray areas in the regulations, and so this is not unusual in the sense that we're having a dialogue with HUD and what the final outcome is, we will adhere to because we want to be compliant. Um, <clears throat> but our interpretation is that it does not meet the 15% threshold. Um, and so that is why we move forward without a publication, without um, uh, a 30-day comment period, because it does not meet that threshold requirement. If HUD determines that it does because of some interpretation on other sections, we will comply with what they, with what they require, which would mean that we publish this, um, we, we put it out for a 30-day comment period, and then potentially um, the action has already been taken. We just wouldn't be able to effectuate that action. And that's in the case that this motion to reconsider um, does, not, does not pass. So. Don't, please, thank so, you. So, um, the other question that has been raised, and I think this has been resolved, is related to the review committee, and there is no requirement um, in our citizens' participation plan for a review committee. This was actually discussed last year at length, um, and our CPD representative actually responded in writing that he reviewed the entire citizens' participation plan and saw no reference to a, a review committee. That is not to say that we do not want that. Um, we've actually been in conversation with council people and really need you to um, put, that, um, put that process in place to make appointments because it is, again, in the best interest of the city to have outside reviewers. Now, historically, that has not happened for the reprogramming process. And that is a process that has had um, differing, um, and, and that process is also not spelled out in the citizens' participation plan, which is also something that we've talked about modifying, especially if the CWAC or a review committee, whatever it's called, becomes um, relevant again, which I know there's work underway between the law office and, um, and, um, and the state treasurer's office to um, eliminate or rescind emergency manager order number 33. If that comes, we will have to amend our CPP. So as we look to amend our CPP, we are looking for um, information, looking for some you know, kind of recommendations, and we certainly, we've already taken steps to do that, and we recommend that we do that. It doesn't exist for this process, and the process that was used for reprogramming has been the process that's been used for reprogramming over the past several years. So until there's a review committee that's actually in place, um, that, that process doesn't actually exist. Again, that's not to say that we are not working towards that or that we do not agree with it, but that it, ha it doesn't exist right now, and we would like that to actually be put in place very quickly because, as you all know, and I mentioned two weeks ago, we're in the midst of our action plan process, which is our entitlement allocation process, and so we need that committee and that group, uh, that body established very quickly. Um, I don't know if there's anything else uh, that you'd like answered, but I think that is, um, that's the crux of, uh, of um, what we've done and what we intend to do.
I have some questions, but Councilman Mays. I'm yeah, sorry. Madam Chair, through you to Ms. Wilcox, the sheet that I handed you that was passed out to the council people that used the word um, amendments, did you get a chance to look at that, and are you familiar with any of that, and do you think that's um, something that concerns you on this, or it don't? Um, I think most of the most of the items that were addressed on here are I've, I've addressed in my comments, but uh -huh. specifically, um, and you shared that with me and I appreciate it, um, please note there should have been public notice and a proposed program amendment regarding the reprogram funds. That's the discussion we just had about the difference between a minor and a substantial amendment. So a, a minor amendment does not require the public comment. It does not require a 30-day um, period. And so if we do not consider something a substantial amendment, then it's a minor amendment. And it basically, minor amendments are assembled at the end of the year and submitted to HUD with our CAPER. So that's what we were considering uh, for this. So in fact, you've looked at them four or five points and you ain't really tripping off of them. Um, I, I can respond Joyce, to, the, to the points. Um, Joyce, I'm going to ask you to refrain from making the outburst, please. That's, your, that's actually the second warning, but the first one that I'm going to recognize on the record. Thank you. Um, the second point, so that's, that's my response to the first point. The second point, the City of Flint would have to amend its annual action plan for the years the reprogram funds came from, as well as its consolidated plan that covered the time period in accordance with uh, um, that's actually what this process is. So because we're not considering it, a, there's, there's not a specific um, amendment that gets submitted uh, to HUD, you know, per se, and that may be a point of, um, you know, clarification that needs to be made. The process that we go through, whether it's a minor amendment or a substantial amendment, is the actual amendment. So if it's a substantial amendment, there's the newspaper article actually spells out we are amending the city of Flint's um, consolidated plan. That is what is actually prepared. So um, I think there might be some, you know, just lack of clarity about what an amendment is, but whether it's a minor or a substantial amendment, the process we go through is actually defined in our CPP and that's what spells out um, whether what type of an, what type of an amendment it is. is it is not it is not something that gets submitted to HUD, except for minor amendments, um, become they get compiled at the end of the year, and, and substantial amendments do too. But minor amendments and substantial are compiled at the end of the year, included in the caper. What about the third point? <clears throat> it's point of information. Um, are we planning on going? Because this was given to us from, by a constituent. And so I just want to, I want to just, because I'm the chair, so I'm not using my time, Councilman Mays, I'm chairing this meeting. And so we just talked about, Ms. Wilcox, if I'm not mistaken, you just talked about getting valid information or not. This was given to us by a constituent. Correct. And I don't deem that it's necessary for us to go point by point by the, on this. And so. For me it is. Councilman Councilman Mays, get, get, get real. You're a council person. You speak the most about spending all this time with administration heads and, and department heads. Are you telling me that you want her to go through yeah, something that yeah, was given from somebody? Three. I'm well, on point yeah. three. I'm on point three. It was um, handed I'm to sorry. all of us. I'm so sorry. You are I'm not sorry. the only person that wants to ask Ms. Wilcox some questions. Well, they, and so, don't get a well chance. then we're going to move. Going then, then what we're going to do, what we're going to do, because I have the right to. No, you don't. Yes, you do, because no, I have let you get uh, latitude and you are I'm going to let other council order, people know I'm not councilman Mays you out of no order right. we on point three as the chairperson I have the right to limit her time you, and so because I have a right to limit her time I am have, not going to allow you to you, use you it up right then Mays. Mays. limit her time no. and do it all according no. to you I want her to answer. No, because three. these are coming from someone that I'm is speculative a, a, just a, like the Flint Journal. I'm going to that she don't have oh, to answer. Oh, God. You can, could, Ms. Wheeler, could you please read for the record the right that the chair I'm has on speakers? I'm going to tell her 
you subject to the majority of the council. You ain't no dictator I'm sitting up there. I'm talking about what the rules I tell me the I have right, the latitude to do. If I want to know the answers before I vote to whatever was passed out to all us, I'm going to try my best to do it. So when you tell her no, she don't have to answer me, I'm going to appeal I'm the I'm not saying that she said. doesn't have to answer well, you. I'm saying that. Stay out the way and let Kathy, her answer. Ms. Ms. Wheeler, stay out the way. Let this is the February 12, 2018 so no. City of if Flint you change City it, Council meeting. If you announce it, then we'll continue. But I'm going to do my due diligence before I vote, and that's a part of it. It's been passed out to everybody. I want to see if it carries some weight. I want the answer of number three. It says Ms. development block. Ms. Right Wheeler. Madam Chair. Oh. Wait, Ms. Wheeler. Okay, so back to um, section rule 7.1, subsection um, 13. Uh, it talks about a council member may request to ask questions of administrative staff or accept anyone else um, during debate on any agenda item. Guest speaker time allowed shall be determined by the presiding chair. So. Is it, and is not considered a part of the limited debate time al uh, allocated to the council members. So um, two things there is that you determine the time of the speaker Correct. and the time that the council members have is not counted against them. Correct. So, so Madam Chair, anything is appealable. If I'm in the middle of qu talking, and we already know the time ain't working on resolutions. I think it's outrageous if somebody passed something up to us, it's five points, I get on number three, and you gonna say she don't have to answer. I didn't that's say that she didn't have well, to you, answer, yes, Councilman Mays. Say? That's why we Councilman Mays. Now I feel your Councilman Mays. Councilman but, Galloway. But, but, but we just had the attorney. You have the right to appeal the decision of the chair, but I the did. attorney just ruled that I am operating within your, my purview. Your thing is to see if it's a second, not to go into discussion uh, on the appeal. You just messed you, up You are right, Councilman Mays, but what I will say for the record, the that any council person that supports your appeal is saying that the rules no, are not valid. No, you can't say Come that. Come on, Councilman All Mays. you can do is discuss it after the second. You want to stack the deck. I'm not. You don't want to do your I'm job right. and say, is there a second to see if it is or not. You want to go into discussion and debate it before it's even time. And then you want to try to make her tell, tell her she don't have to answer That's this. not what I and said. I rest. said if I well, asked why you. Why you interrupting and telling her? Her don't I answer. Do this. I can't do this. I well, I know you ain't good at it. Do you done prove you can't do it. But I didn't realize and that. And you just talk and Until interrupt. You, you done prove that. And if she don't allow Ms. Wilcox to answer this important question, I hope y'all do second the bill. Now, why would she tell this lady she can't answer this that's been handed out? That's not what I said, Councilman so May. It words. wasn't. Yes, you did. Can, yes, can I did. call to question? No. No, yeah. no. So there is a motion on the floor appealing the decision of the chair, and which, for the record, you guys, I haven't even made a decision. I simply asked Councilman Mays if he had the expectation of going through this list. And if he did, I think that it's inappropriate right now because other people have things. And Councilman Mays, that means, do you know how long this list is? No, it's, it's only five points at Councilman the top. Mays. That's what you don't know. I oh, said God. three of five. Ms. You Wilcox, no. in looking at the sheet that you had the ability to answer there, how long do you think it's going to be for you to answer the next four points that Councilman Mays wants you I to see answer? I two or three points. Most of them are the same point. Um, they really, Thank you. Go ahead then. They they Thank really you. they really address what I've already talked about the substantial amendment process. They keep re, they keep repeating um, points that we already have addressed related to the 15 percent. So as they talk about um, the development block grant as a result of the addition or cancellation of a program, that's not a 15. That doesn't meet our 15 percent threshold. So we would disagree with that. Um, 
The City of Flint's program amendment and, and substantial change policy requires commission approval and public input at a, at a public hearing. Again, that is when it meets the 15% substantial amendment threshold. So we, we disagree that it meets that threshold. Um, and then again, the, the final point after proper notice has been published for a 30-day public comment period, the reallocation, uh, the rest of it is just the city of, and this is, I think this is not directly out of the plan, but again, this is after proper notice has been published for a 30-day public comment period, that is only when it's considered a substantial amendment. So our position, and again, discussing with HUD, um, open to their interpretation, and will proceed once that is resolved, but our position is that this is not a substantial amendment, it does not meet that threshold, and therefore is not subject to publication in a 30-day comment period. They're, finally, they're all the same points. Finally, Ms. Wilcox, if you do your due diligence, cross your I's and cross your T's and dot your I's, and HUD answers differently, you won't execute the contract. We not only won't execute the contract, we potentially would publish this in the paper as a substantial amendment and have a 30-day comment period. I'm good. I will not be voting to reconsider. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Fields, I, I have it, some it questions. It took a long time, but I thank you, um, Ms. I, Wilcox. No, I have, right. I've not spoken at all. Ms. Wilcox, you have, dis you have discussed that um, there's been a lot of speculations. And so I want to ask questions specific to what you just said. You said HUD has raised some issues. I did not say HUD has raised some issues. HUD, ha HUD has asked questions. You, you know, you used the word issue oh. because I wrote it down. Okay. And, and, and the reason why I wrote it down is because I wanted to be careful to use the same terms you used. Okay, I apologize. And you said HUD has raised some issues in which we are answering them. Mm -hmm. Because I immediately wrote, because I want to be specific in an effort to make sure that I vote appropriately, my question was, what issues have been raised specifically? Outside of the Flint Journal, this is not that. They have cons obviously been in communication with you, and again, I'm using your words, and so my questions are, what issues have HUD raised specifically to this resolution and the reallocation of these funds? So I've, I've tried to be very careful to say questions, so I apologize, because questions is how I would prefer, as I said earlier, to characterize it. So questions are what they have raised, and they were generated by the M Live article. So the questions that they have um, asked us um, relate specifically to the article, because according to, and I don't know what dialogue other citizens have had with HUD and how that, how that informed the article, but my information from HUD has been that it was, the questions were generated by the M Live article. So they specifically asked um, some of the questions that I already answered tonight about our process, about our citizens' participation um, plan process, and... Um, um, now, Ms. Whitcox, while you're looking that up, can I ask you a question? Sure. Is it typical for an agency such as HUD to cause their questions to be initiated based on journal questions. And I hope I'm answering, because if I'm a HUD director or somebody that deals with block club, block fund grants, does it seem interesting that they would begin to question based on an article if there was no relevancy? And I don't know if my question is, is making sense to you. Um, I can't really answer um, HUD's position. I can say that there have been articles in the past that have generated questions. And so that is not to say that other, um, other questions were asked of them that also piqued their interest. But um, we have had um, inquiries from HUD before based upon other articles because sometimes they hear, that's how they hear um, what's going on. Typically, as I, I said earlier, um, the substantial amendment process is not something that goes through HUD. It's not something that we submit to HUD for review and approval, so they don't typically hear it. Um, the fact that it was raised in a journal article, I think, is what 
is how they became aware of it. And so because there were questions raised at a council meeting, um, I, that, that's what actually raised the questions. I don't know if that's typical or not. I can say that it has happened a couple times in the past. So, it, so did, in your experience, because you've been doing this, what, 25 years or so? Almost. Okay. In your experience, does it usually have any validity at all or no? Uh, it depends on the issue. And, uh, in this case, is there any, because, and, and you used a couple of other words that I took note to. You use words like interpretation. Mm -hmm, that's what I was going to There's say. a lot of gray areas, mm -hmm. right? And so when you use words like that, it's a matter of interpretation. So you interpret it one way, and then HUD comes in and says, well, no, it actually should be interpreted another way. Is that what we're dealing with right now? That is what I believe we're dealing with right now, and that is what um, we have dealt with in the past, and it's, it's discussion where we make our, um, our case. This is our interpretation, interpretation of our citizen's participation plan, which has actually been, like I said, submitted to HUD um, before, last year as a matter of fact, for review, and so they're familiar with it. And there are, um, there are um, components that HUD may interpret differently, you know, and, and that I think is actually what's going on right now and why we want to wait until those questions are answered before we uh, move forward. Now, my last question, Ms. Wilcox. With the fact that you are still in dialogue with the HUD, Mm -hmm. and, and with the possibility that this could go one way or the other, I would like you to tell me, as a council person that is fiduciarily responsible for the oversight of these funds, why it would be a responsible decision for me to not vote for the um, reconsideration um, of this resolution considering there is that dialogue and there appears to be in some way or another some sort of a disagreement or and or we don't line up with how we see things why would it be responsible for me to not do a motion to reconsider and wait for you to iron this out with HUD and move it through just as fast. Because we can have special meetings. I hear my colleagues talk about that all the time. You know, we can do a special meeting. All we need is a 24-hour turnaround, and we can do a special meeting. Why would I not want to do that, considering these questions have not been answered for HUD? And we've been given a definitive <clears throat> answer from them saying, you guys are good, don't worry about it. I, um, I don't know that I'm the person to answer that question. I think that um, it's, really, um, it's really a question whether you reconsider it or not, we are still going through our process. So regardless of what happens at this level, and, and, and I really don't know your rules, particularly on when you can reconsider a motion or if it can be, if it can be considered later, or I really don't know that. But um, we are, regardless of that, we are moving forward with resolving those questions and discussing them with HUD. So as, as I said before, as trustees, really, all of us are trustees, of, we, we won't move forward inappropriately because none of us, even if that was not a sanction, none of us want to get cited um, by HUD for doing something that they disagree with. So I don't, I really can't answer your question about reconsidering, but I can tell you, Arcane as I've stated, that we are not moving forward, um, and that is a conversation that has occurred with all members of the administration. We are not moving forward until we have our questions answered. Okay. Um, Ms. Fields. Okay, answer? now this is important for council to understand. You'll notice that at a previous meeting, I asked to have the citizen participation plan um, as a discussion item on the grants committee to rewrite that, and here's why. It's called a CPP, citizen's participation plan, but the fact of the matter is this 2013 CPP was put in place by an emergency manager, okay? This wasn't a council plan, council approved, the emergency manager set these thresholds. And on what basis, what decision, 
you know, I don't know, with recommendations from the department, et cetera. But that's not a citizen's plan. That's an EFM plan, okay? So I actually have a solution for this that might solve many problems, okay? It's not in contention spending a certain amount of money up to a certain threshold that's over 300,000, okay? It's the over 400,000 that we approved that's in contention. Ms. Wilcox is stating that her interpretation of the CPP, okay, is that we're not in violation. But the fact is, the bottom line is, it's HUD's interpretation that counts, and we don't know if they're gonna buy that argument or not, okay? So, I'm sorry, that's a little. Uh, uh, yeah, Councilman Mays, if you guys can, thank you. So, my recommendation would be, because the city needs to get some money under contract, needs to expend it, and because it's necessary for public safety, I would suggest that we vote to reconsider that ori original resolution that we passed that's for over 400000 and after that is reconsidered, then we immediately, someone makes a motion to allocate the amount of money we can without triggering the threshold for HUD, because if we do that, then we can spend the money right away. It helps the city with its expenditure timeliness ratio. And we don't have to wait to find out when HUD makes the decision. Suppose they do make the decision we have to publish and have a public hearing for 30 days. That's gonna halt that timeliness. It's gonna delay our purchase of that fire truck, okay? And if we do it that way, it doesn't mean that the rest of that money can't be reprogrammed for the same uses, other uses, you know, that we don't fund this evening. It'll still be waiting there to be reprogrammed, but this will take care of getting the money spent, getting it spent quickly, and not triggering, um, excuse me, you're, it's, uh, she a trip as much as she talk and do. Her and word, that man ain't so, so my recommendation is that we do that. And at this moment, I'd like to call the con I'd like to call the question on the reconsideration. Call the question. Yeah, Mr. Gear, it's been it's been moved and properly seconded. There is no discussion on the call for the question. Madam Clerk, roll call on a call for the question. No. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Mr. Mays? No. Mr. Davis? No. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? Yes. Oh. No. <laughs> Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. The vote is five yes, three no on the call for the question. Madam Chair. Councilman Guerra. Point of order. They oh. call for the question. It passed. Oh. So now we vote. Councilman Guerra, we vote now. Now we can make some of your motion. Point, point of order. Vote. Call for the question. Now the, um, the vote, the question you vote, so now we are voting on the This is the February 12, 2018, City of Flint yes, City Council meeting. No, there's no discussion. But you know, Roll call. I had asked to speak before you called for the question. That's why I voted no. They screwed I didn't. I, I, they screwed you. Let's, let's, let's move on. Please. It'll make sense at the while. Goodness. So this is the vote on Go ahead. reconsideration? Let's, let's, let's move yes, on. it is the vote okay. on the question. This Could is the vote on reconsideration? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mr. Mays? Um, no on the motion for reconsideration. Did y'all repeat what the question was? Am I the first vote? You are. Yes. And so this is the motion for reconsideration, Correct. right? Correct. No. 
Mr. Davis? No. Mr. Guerra? Yes. Ms. Fields? Yes. Ms. Winfrey Carter? No. Mr. Win I'm sorry. Ms. Galloway? Yes. Mr. Griggs? Yes. Ms. Worthing? Yes. Okay, the vote is five yes, three no. Uh, Miss Madam Chair, I mean it fails. It fails. It fails. No, it yeah, you need six. Yeah, you need true. six. Yeah, it, right. fails. Right. it fails. It fails. It that's what happened. Right. It failed. Yeah. Call for the question. Yeah. It has to be six. It fails. Two thirds vote. Right. Hmm? Six. It has to be a two thirds vote of the majority of the It fails. Two thirds vote. Right. Announce it. So it's it a fails. Vote. It failed by one vote. Make the announcement. Five to three. It fails. Y'all gonna announce it? Did it pass? She or did. Failed? She did announce it. It okay. failed. So it was, it was scheduled to pass by a two-thirds vote or six votes, and it did not. Okay. Okay. So, moving on to um. Additional new business. Final comments. I'm gonna start down here, Miss Worthing. Final comments, five minutes. Thank you, Miss Worthing. Mr. Griggs. Nothing. Thank you, Mr. Griggs. Miss Winfrey Carter. You know, um, um, I gotta say, I am appalled. Here you go. At the um, at the way that this meeting. Um, was uh, was ran. Um, I think we all need to um, be mindful as um, council members that we need to respect each other and that we need to continue to maintain professionalism. I mean, you know what? This is this is out of control, and I'm just sorry. To, um, to speak on the appointments of the Ethics um, Committee, um, Murphy, Quincy Murphy, please, um, please be advised that I am working on that, okay? <clears throat> Mr. Um, Polarando, Pellerino. Del Moreau. Del, Del, Del Remo, I'm sorry. Mr. Chris Del Remo, I'm sorry. Um, pardon me? <laughs> okay. I do agree with you um, on the points that you made that renters who pay water bills, they also need to be able to get some relief. So I will um, work with you to make sure that that happens because that is not fair that they they are paying water bills and they are not getting relief. So I will be uh, working on that with you um, as well as for the grants committee, the committee that I sh um, chair, we will be um, working on the citizens protection plan and to make sure that everything is transparent as far as our um, community development grants. Um, for my constituents in the Fifth Ward, please know that you can call me at any time. I'm always available for your questions, problems, and concerns. Please call the council um, office, leave a message, um, email me, call me. You have all of my contacts and I will be working to meet your needs. Thank you, and have a good night. Councilman Guerra. Yeah, I just wanted to say with the recent weather that we've had, just remind people to stay safe out there. And I look forward to uh, working with the charter. I know that we were discussing that throughout the meeting and other future business that we have to come across. And uh, Ms. Winfrey, my apologies. I didn't see that you were up next to speak on that issue. <coughs> Davis. I like to say uh, I'm appalled as well. Is is my 
I say constituent, I guess I'll say constituent. The disrespect is at an all time high at these council seats. I hope out there wherever in Facebook, channel 17 or even in wherever the audience out here live, notice the people that's not in their seats, they don't need to be in their seats. It's very disrespectful if you can't respect somebody else, you want people to respect you, but you don't have the decency to even respect your seat enough to listen to the finishing of the colleagues sitting here. Luckily, we ain't worried about a quorum this evening. Also, the city with the snow plowing. It's a disrespect once again when you have people plowing partial uh, uh, of a community and not the other parts of community. It's a disrespect, I'm gonna say it like it is. The poor black folks and white folks is not getting treated the same, but it's an adamant push for a new charter to be pushed into play. And as well as is the rules of this body sitting here. How can we do city business when you can't really engage in conversation as important matters as such with Ms. Wilcox today? Uh, my colleague, Mr. Mays, make very good points, but it's a very disrespectful when you're on the timely basis of everything like we little kids. This is real city business. Millions of dollars getting moved. But you have to be on a time clock like we in somebody's school or this is some type of a form to just go through the motion. This is real. And we cannot actually engage people. I can't wait till the rules come about with the city council. But in closing, I will say this. The privilege is real sitting here. Very disrespectful. People using words as attack from Mr. Councilman Mays toward other uh, constituents. It's not a tax, it's a movement to try to get Councilman Mays out of his seat because the push for what's going on is real. They don't like what they see, but they might well get ready. We sitting here and we here to do a job. So if you don't like it, you shouldn't be in these chairs. As you can see, when election time come again, just look up here, if you're looking in Facebook land, who's not in their seat, they don't need to be in their seat. I'm done. Councilman Mays. Yeah, and it's repeated, it's the same people. It's the same people leaving committee meetings early, leaving council meetings early. They got chairmanships and they leave. You don't have to believe me, just look at the last council meeting and look at this one and look at the ones before. I've looked at it. I'm not going to continue, Pastor Gilbert, to be called a racist. It's a personal attack. I'm not going to continue to be called a bully. It's a personal attack. I'm not, not, not going to continue to allow people to say I'm harassing them under Robert's rules and nowhere else. And discrimination, I despise. Different treatment. I'm listening to the people who are saying it. And the record will prove it. Worthing, Kate Fields, Monica Galloway, and I'm here to tell you that's how I politic. When the record is made against me, personal attacks. Can you imagine if I was calling Kate Fields and Worthen racist publicly? Now this is Black History Month. I'm far north end, and here you got white folks got the nerve to publicly call me a racist. And then you got women in the tone of society calling me a bully, harassment, intimidation from the way I act and talk under Robert's Rules of Order. And it's clear that they don't understand Robert's Rules. And it's making mistake after mistake after mistake on the public record. One of the most outrageous was the day was point of order, I'm not going to respect it. Outrageous. So let them continue to call me a racist. Let them continue to feel like they say intimidated. Last time I said when you get on the elevator for years, some folks clutch their purse because we stereotyped as black African-American men, particularly if you got a deep voice, I guess. Bullying, harassment, these has been the public personal attack allegations against our rules. 
And so I'm looking at it, and as they try to make a record, the record will speak for itself. I will start to call out names of those who do it. I will start making a record, just like I did with the former council people, and so I'd have named three. Kate Fields, Worthing, and Miss Galloway. I'm getting tired of it. I'm not going to let them mess up my political reputation, my name, my family name. I grew up here. And it's going to stop. But if it don't stop, I'll call out the folks. And I'll ask them to come and support me. Because I don't come here to be attacked. I don't come here to be treated differently. I come here to take care of the city of Flint's business and to take care of my constituents. I am now the senior council person, carried a bunch of votes in the first war, support the administration, even though I know how to check and balance it. I understand rules. So I'm going to say to the people of the city of Flint, God bless you. May God keep you, and you pray for me and this council. And to Mr. Davis and to Ms. Jerry Winfrey Carter, under the rules of Roberts, Roberts' rules and our rules, when you have seconded these appeals of the ruling of the chair, you have kept me from getting frustrated and cussing. So I appreciate it continue to support me and I'll support you. We are really supporting the citizens of the city of Flint. And Ms. Galloway, if I was like your colleagues that you seem to want to team up with, I would get up and leave and this meeting would adjourn for a lack of a quorum and I wouldn't have to hear another word you said. But I'm gonna take the high road and do you a little different than folks seem to wanna do me, including you. Thank you. Thank you. Just for the record, there is a special council meeting tomorrow at 5 p.m. to discuss the water relief fund. Just for the record, I too have served on this council since 2013. And despite what Councilman May says, this is not about the, those that are not sitting in the seat and those that are. He and I are the only two council people that are original from 2013. Councilman Mays, this is nothing about race. This is about the fact that Councilman Mays is a African American man that can be intimidating. And I'm gonna tell you the truth. I can hang with the best of them. I really can. I think I got thick skin, Pastor Gilbert. But every once in a while, I have to remind myself that I'm female. I am a black female. And I don't have to be abused by anybody trying to use their political power. Power is not in trying to cause people to be intimidated to do what you want them to do. And Councilman Mays, since 2013, I've expressed and seen your abuse. And yes, break up the curm, because now you didn't open up a door that you don't want to walk through. Baby, I'm here too, and I ain't afraid of you. Your 1,400 votes, baby, I'm up against those too. You gonna stop There's here no respectful the or not. Over then walk away, Councilman Mays. Then walk away. Then walk no, away, I'm Councilman Mays. You head on calling me stop names. being abusive. The Stop meeting is over. I don't approve. Walk away. I don't file a Walk job. away. You're abusive. You create a hostile environment, and until somebody does something, no you have to No personal attacks. You out of order. Quit. You already did it. Attacks. You said you named three. Well, I'm naming you. How about that? There's a lack of a quorum. Don't open a door you don't want to walk through, because I'm a big girl, too. when it's no